Here we are, part 37. Hello, VOD watchers. Welcome in. Thank you so much for making it all the way to part 37. I hope you enjoyed part 36. There's a lot more in there than I anticipated that there would be. Uh, I hope that you've been enjoying the run so far. If you ever want to catch me live, I'm live at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time every night except for Mondays. And I am really glad to have you here. Thanks for supporting my channel. If for whatever reason you have provided any kind of financial support to the stream by way of becoming a member by hitting the join button down below, by sending a tip, or by buying merch by going to drmickmerch.com, thank you very much for your financial support. The stream will never be behind a paywall, but those of you that do support what I do uh, financially, I'd like to let you know that it very much makes a difference, and I am very grateful for it. And I'm sorry I haven't been able to say it to you live because you're watching a VOD. But whether you're here shortly after I did this stream or whether you're here years later, hello. And thank you for supporting what I do. Make sure you follow me. All that jazz. All right. Got a good one tonight. Uh, let's check the journal. So we have a new journal entry. So I want to start by seeing where John's head's at. I'm not much of a... I'm not much of a rancher, but I can still give a big mouth a good smack. Abigail still seems to despise me. Jack ain't sure, but I reckon he ain't none too keen. She went and left me. Gave me enough warning, I suppose. She weren't wrong. I'd leave me if I could. What now? No son, no woman. And a no-good rancher with a no-good ranch. Rich bastards, the Laramies, want old Getty's dead. If I had a brain, I'd go work for them. I kind of like Getty's. I like how he draws in here. It's awesome. Met these two really odd brothers and this girl they claim to love. Reckon they once knew Arthur. Not sure, but he seemed to know a fair few oddballs aside from all the lot I knew. Anyway... I think there was college boys and she had a local. Hard to know as the whole thing was so strange. They got me to push them off a waterfall in a pair of barrels. They both somehow survived. Just about. And then they turned on the girl and went off together like two happy peas in a pod. Not sure what to think about the whole business. Saw Sadie Adler again. Guess I thought she'd been dead. Maybe it's just me that's been dead. I don't know. It's good to see her. She's a bounty hunter and suited to the work. Saw her put a knife clean through the hand of some big old boy she was fighting with. Ain't seen her since she and Arthur saved Abigail, and then Arthur saved my life. We headed north, and she turned to this line of work. I love the picture of it. The knife in the hand. Good for John, man. He's trying. Met a strange guy. Thought he was a prophet. Blind. Good news. I now own a ranch. Bad news, I now have uncle with me. Or is it the reverse? If he don't shut his mouth, I'll paint his place with his blood. I bought a dumpy bit of land for Abigail and she ain't here. Instead, I got uncle. The hell did this happen? I got the... I got the worst of all things. I miss Abigail. I've been a proper fool for longer than I can remember. For always. Went to sign to knee with Uncle because Charles Smith was there and in trouble. Charles had taken to boxing and did not seem in too much trouble after all until we stumbled into some local gangsters who wanted to shoot both of us. And now he's here and I've got myself a completely different family to the one I had a while ago. Not sure what to make of that. Yeah. Alright, before we start, I'm going to go tuck my wife into bed. I'll let that sink in. Use this as an opportunity to hit like. Hit follow. Be right back, friends. Thanks for being here. All right. Nighttime here in Blackwater. Miss Sadie Adler would like to have a word with us. I reckon that sounds all right. Although there's a part of me that wants to go camp and talk to her in the morning. So why don't we call old Rachel over here? You're a good filly. Alright. Let's go right out to the wilderness. Right. 
mean, I guess I could ride home, but that feels kind of dumb. So why don't we just... Oh, easy. Why don't we just set ourselves up a campfire? Oh, thank you, Jackson. You mercifully killed a horse once, and now the whole town of Blackwater is calling you Troublemaker. I actually think that's from the old days. I don't actually think that that is from the horse thing. Beautiful morning. Look at that sunrise. Nice. That's a nice picture. Grateful for Rachel not taking a big dunk while we look at that beautiful sunrise. Thank you, Rachel. Let's talk to Mrs. Adler, huh? So what I'm curious about is Sadie's doing all of this... Uh, capture and I wonder if she's doing it under the pseudonym of that one guy that, that like his name like started with an L that we read about in the paper like I wonder if she has to pose as a dude in the papers in order for people to be like I don't know something about that Get lined up just right, Don't sir. Use this for liquor, all right. You gotta take it. You gotta Thanks, partner. I'm all alone, Mister. I'm gonna die all alone with nothing, nothing to show for it. You know, when John says don't use this... When John says don't use this for alcohol, don't be that person. If you choose to give money to somebody who's homeless, don't dictate how they spend the money. Give them the money, let them do what's best for them. You don't get to decide what's best for a person you're going to help out. I, f I find it absolutely annoying when people are like, don't spend this on alcohol. That's what that person needs in order to get through their day. Maybe numb it out a little bit. He'd probably want to do the same. So, John, just give him the money and go. Oh, I don't believe I'm having pleasure. Howdy, Mrs. Adler. Hello, Sadie. Oh, John. <laughs> Come sit down. Sure. You, uh, you got any work? Yeah. Well, there's always work. Whole country's getting robbed, robbing, or stopping robbers. Well, seems like there ain't much else in this world except bastards, victims of bastards, and the bastards who want to put the bastards in the ground. And which are you, exactly? Me? In my time, all three. But same as most people. I guess. Well, funny thing about this job, well, opportunity, I just might get to be all three again. How you mean? <clears throat> you ever heard of uh, Shane Finley? Cattle wrestler? Murder, thief, child killer. He's wanted in five states. I caught him last week. He was disguised as a lady in a house for fallen women. <laughs> I was bringing him in, and I got robbed by a professional rival of mine, James Langton. Oh, he's a nasty bastard. I didn't much like him even before he robbed me. That happened a lot. This line of work. Yeah, but they're all people like me. Anyway, now they're holed up in the desert down south waiting to head north so they can hand them in to the state troopers in the north country. I'd given up on the job as just a bad lot, but now that you're here, maybe we can go rob them back. Is the money good? Yeah. It's real good. Plus, I don't much like getting robbed by no one. Come on. Where is it we're heading again, you say? Mm. South. 
Now come on, mount up. We got. I'm not gonna be super hard on Sadie here, <laughs> but <laughs> what John has to come to terms with is that if he's gonna do it the right way, it's gonna take a while. He is so conditioned to the idea that you gotta make a lot of money really quick. And that's not how it has to be. You can make your monthly payments to the bank. You can, you can find a job. You were doing a good job, buddy. He's, he's so allured by this. Oh, is money good? Fuck it. I'll rob him. Like, dude. Ah! Old patterns, man. They die hard. And Langton is the bounty hunter that I thought she might be, so I guess she's uh, she's fighting against them. I guess they're rivals. Of course we do. All right. Okay, Missy. Follow me. Let's ride. Yes, ma'am. That new horse? Some folk buy ranches, some buy horses. Horses are cheaper. He looks mean. He is. My ranch? It's something else, you know. You gotta come up there. He ain't had any trouble? Some squatters, but that's it for the most part. That's good. Maybe these fellers I heard about have stayed north or gone off somewhere else or drop down dead in their own tracks. It's good country. All country is good. It's just folk that are bad. You know who I got up there with me? Uncle. Besides uncle. Abigail. Uh, Abigail ain't come there just yet. Really? You, er, want to talk about it? Well, maybe, but Charles Smith. We found Charles Smith. Charles? He's alive? Yeah. He's doing okay. He was prize fighting in Saint Denis. Weren't seeming too well. He took everything real hard. But I think life on the plains is gonna be good for him. I always like Charles. You send him my best. I will. You know, you can come along too. Build a cabin on the land. I've done that all before. Yeah, you know, that's really interesting. So, Sadie is not... Sadie is doing right now what I kind of wish John would do. And she's not being super direct about it. But you'll notice, again, there's information in what she says. There's also information in what she doesn't say. Sadie's gone her own way. She has found something to do. She's making a living doing it. It's meaningful for her, and she is keeping separation between her and everybody. And so John keeps saying things like, you should come up to the ranch. You should have sit down and establish yourself by us. You should do this, right? And she is not directly communicating that that sounds like a good idea to her. Like, she's definitely sending a passive message that she's not interested in that. And I respect her for that. If, if, that's what, if that's where she's at, I respect her for that. And I kind of hope that John maybe learns something from her on this. Because there is something to be learned from that. Sadie is doing okay. She can have this relationship with John. John can help her out. You know, she's doing honest work. And it works for her. And she has separated herself from everybody else. We don't hear Sadie talking about everybody else. Sadie could have made the same kind of effort that we did. She reached out and found John. But it's very, very clear that she's keeping some separation here. She's got her own life now, like she did prior to the Vanderlyn gang. He'll figure it out, Mona. I'm on my own now, 
strong. I, I yeah, see, there we go. Uh, the offer's there. Whenever you want it. That's kind. Unlikely to be taken up, but kind. That right there. That's beautiful. That is how you set a boundary and how you are clear about it. I appreciate the offer. It is unlikely that I will accept. So she sets a realistic expectation and she acknowledges that it's coming from a good place. Sadie is a good influence on John. This is, that is excellent. That's boundary setting 101. Right, John didn't fully pick up on it. He continues to allude to the fact that it's available to her. She becomes clear. She says, John, look, I appreciate it. I'm not much good with people. I found my own way. I'm not, I'm not gonna take you up on that. I'm willing to maintain this relationship as we have it now, but that's about it for me. That's great. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful example of how to set a boundary there. And hopefully, you know, John now has to listen to that. And it's great. You heard anything of Dutch? Nothing. You? No. You'd think he's a colorful character. Word would get out. That's one way of putting it. Look, what happened with the gang changed everyone who was a part of it. The Dutch who put a blanket around me after the O'Driscolls, that weren't the same man at Beaver Hollow. And now, he might not be so colorful no more. You see a man whose character changed. I see a man who got found out for who he truly was. We That's a hell of a line. It was fools to follow him. I was a fool and I paid for it. But I was one of the lucky ones. Micah, John. Micah's the one who set it off. <laughs> I know I keep... Ah! There's so much in this epilogue. It's so good. Look at that! Like... Everybody goes to Micah. It's so Sadie and John just got as close as we've seen anybody get to holding Dutch accountable. And for for saying that Dutch absolutely has a part in this and Sadie still goes to Micah. Like it's amazing how uh, like you you just you get them both their package deal at this point. But I mean again, I I'm not suggesting that Micah didn't have a role in this. He absolutely did. It's just amazing to me. How quickly everybody goes there. Blame me for following Dutch for too long, but I blame Micah for most everything else. He's out there. And someday, I hope we'll find him. I blame me for following Dutch for so long. Really listen to what that is saying. What that suggests is that Dutch is a static character that appeared to be so immovable that they had to move to a point of empathy toward him. And John is quicker to blame himself for following Dutch than to be harsh with Dutch for misleading him. It's very subtle. It's very subtle, but very important. Because John can certainly say there were times where I might have set a boundary with him and either left the group or spoken up. But for John to take full accountability and say, I followed him too long is not fair to his conceptualization of himself and the power that Dutch's leadership in that cult-like group had. It's very self-victim blaming. He is accountable for the fact that he followed Dutch, but the group in Dutch created an environment that was very difficult to leave, and it was very difficult to see alternatives. Always hold leadership more accountable than the constituents. And that language shows a reflection of John still deferring too much accountability for the de-evolution of that group. Suggesting that he somehow should have left earlier. Maybe he should have, but hindsight is not a fair thing to apply here. 
Really interesting bit of language there. But uh, not now. Come on. Outlaw you captured in a women's boarding house? Shane Finley, correct. And we aim to have Langton give him back to us before he rides north with him to hand him over to some state troopers? Correct again. Though the giving back part is optimistic. I'm forever the optimist. Gotta love that. Arthur the pessimist, John the optimist. You know, I've been doing some bounty hunting of my own since I last saw you. I ain't gonna make a habit of it. We cut off here. Woo! This is the place. It's a view, all right. Wow. certainly do mrs. Adler anything Not yet. keep looking between here and that town they'll be there somewhere I think I see something yep. there they are down there who's who well the bounty is the feller who's all tied up <laughs> very funny and that big fat feller with the funny hat that's James Langton the other fellas just work for him. Where do you think they're heading? Uh, come on. Let's go follow them. Looks like they're cutting through the canyon underneath us. Let's go. Yeah. Sadie's the leader. John's a follower. Works out well. This is, this is easy peasy for John here. They'll be coming through here. Gotta watch our shadows, Mrs. Adler. Oh, there they are. Oh, we shit. follow and keep an eye on them. See him, so I hope you got your eye on him. You won't get north through here. What are you doing, huh? You you're talking to me or like <laughs> I ain't used to having anyone with me. My guess is they'll stop up ahead. We can get a better look at them. You know his thinking pretty well. Hmm? If you can't outgun them. You gotta outthink them. The canyon opens up down a ways. We'll head them off there. Hey. Your chance. Yeah, they're stopping. And that sure is Shane Finley coming off the. 
of his horse. What are they waiting for? Uh, the rest of Langton's men, I think. Langton's doing pretty well for himself. How come he's got all them men and you work alone? <laughs> I got you. You're worth ten of them. <sighs> Great. All right, so what you think? Should we threaten them? Start shooting at them or sneak down and pick them off one by one? I reckon sneaking down is our best opportunity, but uh, it's your call. My call? I'll follow your lead. Let's sneak down there. Okay, well, follow away. Stay down and stay close. Let's go. Yeah, I'm doing what you suggested, Sadie. I ain't, I ain't much of a bounty hunter no more. We're going down the canyon. Look out on these rocky paths. Yay. How these guys couldn't hear us coming up on them. We can't go around them. You take one of them, I'll take the other. Okay. You got a throwing knife? Well, I got a throwing knife. One, I'll get the other. Uh, do I have a throwing knife? I don't. Oh, yeah, I do. How does that guy not hear us? They know we're here. Come on. Of course they know we're here. All right. Well, it was fun while it lasted, Sadie. Jesus. Oh my God. Come on, John, run. either so many of them Jesus holy shit there's like no cover here what are we oh man what are we doing your call. I'll follow your lead. Let's sneak down there. Easy. Okay. Well, follow away. Stay down and stay close. Let's go. Like a million of these dudes. I got no cover. This is just such a bad idea. Such a bad idea, Sadie. I think. I, I, Yeah, no checkpoints, so I got to do it right this time. We can't go around them. You take one of them, I'll take the other. You got to throw it now. You got him. Okay, let's 
Let's move. Up ahead. Another one on patrol. I'll take care of him. Taking care of <laughs> him. Damn squeaky bridges might be the death of us. Come on. I wonder if I can take this guy out. And maybe we don't get caught. Does he kill him? Didn't? Alright, well. all on the same side here we're all just trying to turn bounties in fellas i gotta make every shot count i got no ammo man Nice hat you got, partner. Oh boy. What the hell? Got eight bullets left in this.
might be free of Ride for it. Holy shit. in your cell. I'm serious. Yep, and so am I. Hit him, John, please. Hey, you don't need to do that just because she told you to. I don't need to be hit. I just want to be treated civil. Shut it. I'm gonna treat you civil. I don't need to... I already took your hat. I don't need to hit you while I'm wearing your hat. I can see now it has its rewards. That's a whole lot easier with a partner. That back there, you didn't need a partner. You needed a whole company behind you. We did fine. And with Langton and his men gone, there'll be more demand for our service. <laughs> Sadie, you know I'm a rancher now. <laughs> Mostly. And I know how you're paying for your ranch. Don't spread that around. Hi, I won't. But it would be good to have you along some more. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. Yeah, this is gonna be. This is just hard to shake, man. The jail's up here. The reward is good. Job, lady. Here we are. Grab him and bring him in, John. Sure. You're a bitch and a bastard. Okay. Brought thanks. in Shane Finley. Oh, great. Let's uh, put him in the cell. Damn you. Well, he's wiggling around. Bastard. Ah, the fellers. This was all Mrs. Adler's work. Not mine. Just put him on the bed. We're gonna watch you swing. What for? I didn't do anything. Nothing. Yeah, He's all right. yeah. I thought you said you lost him. Well, I did, but we got him back. Oh, and James Langton's dead. We killed him. Why'd you do a thing like that? It was him that robbed me. Okay. Oh, he's just straight up cool with that? Jesus. There's a decent price on Finley. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> uh. You want this money to go to the bank, too? No, I'll, uh, I'll take it myself. <laughs> okay, Jim Milton. It's John Marston here. That hat right, is well, ridiculous. You need any more work? You can find <laughs> me in town. Or maybe I'll find you. I'm retired. Sure. <laughs> Be well, John. Uh, it's a big hat. It's funny. It's funny because it's bigger than a regular hat. That was a lot of money. We just got a lot of money. Enticing indeed. Very big hat. We're going to keep our big hat. Got similar process to it, Mona. I can see why you would think that. It is half the loan. <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's super interesting because look at this. Like, I got a bounty that's sitting in the sheriff's office that I could take. I mean, I guess I could take the poster. I don't necessarily have to do it, but it just, the allure, man. The allure of a quick book. Enough, quick buck. I could interest you in bounty work. The poster's on the wall. $90 reward for the apprehension or death of Elias Green. He is wanted on warrant for murder and mutilation of six settlers near Manzanita Post. 
He's a member of the Skinner Brothers gang and is considered extremely dangerous. Last seen in the Great Plains area, Green is stocky, wears animal skins, bear hat, and buckskin shirt. It's a sorry situation with them mongrel dogs, the Skinner Brothers. Just when you thought this country had been civilized. You hear what they done up near tall trees? Might be where to look for them, if you can stomach it. I don't think you'll be bringing him in alive, but sure as hell I'd love to spit in his eye before he hung. The mountain country's full of Skinner brothers. You tell me why this one, Elias Green's got a warrant on him. I'd send you after every last one of them jackals if I could. Reason this one's got his picture up is the mayor signed off on it. That's that. What did he do? He perpetrated, or was one of the perpetrators, of a massacre. Party of six. Killed and then some. We have his... I've name. done worse. We have his likeness. You have his warrant. I do. I'll see about him, sir. I'll see what I can do then. The ink's dry on that one. Kill him if you got to. So, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, talking to the police... I, I mean, bounty hunting is not great, Come but on, also, baby. it it also I could do worse. Oh, it's nighttime. Let's go get him. Let's go get him alive. What could go wrong? It's an honest ninety dollars. Look at me. Oh, we are wanted. I mean, we are wanted by the government, Sloppy. That's why the Pinkertons were after us. Yeah, many a men have died by our hand. I mean, because, like, bounty hunting is like, all right, it's not good. Dude, what the hell, man? We have seen so many people with arrows in them. Holy hell. I mean, I suppose I could get animals, and I, I mean, I could make an honest living. No, Crucifer, no. No. No, 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 no. I'm not too worried about it, Ellie. I appreciate the heads up, though. Alrighty. We got our repeater. We got our shotgun. Actually, I wanna. I want my Evans repeater and the Evans repeater. Where it's at. It's my favorite gun in the entire game. And I probably need to clean it. Some not so great noises. Saddle. Slow now. Ah. 
Bounty hunting's still a thing, Sloppy. Just doesn't quite work the same way. Oh Jesus. no. Not great. Thing like this. Not great. Hello? Not here. Oh, yikes. Still breathing. Oh, the better. Hold him. Please, please let me go. Oh, what do you think? Shall we let him go? I say we kill him. Please. please. Oh, no, he's a nice kid. Let him go. <laughs> Damn it, Elias. Let him go, but. Fuck him down! God damn it. Don't think so, buddy. Dude's an idiot. He should have just taken off. I know what I'll do. I'll sit on top of my horse and heckle this guy and give him enough chance to throw a rope around me. Nope. I'm wearing the big hat. Yo, Rachel. Help me out here, girl. Holy shit. Guy's ego got in his way. Now let's get you to Blackwater. Dip shit, torturing folks. I didn't even check to make sure the guy they were torturing was okay. Hopefully, uh. How you feeling up there? It ain't a smart man. The hell? His back on what me. are you doing, Rachel? Kill you. Rachel. I could cut you anytime, Mister. Could you? With uh, your hogtied self, uh, sirs, please get out of the way. Thank you. Trying to return a dangerous man to Blackwater. You got a wife somewhere? You smell like you got a lady. I'd sure like to meet her, feller. Think you could fix it so we're introduced? Sure thing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the leverage right now? Me, big boy. You say whatever you want. I don't give a shit. You ever felt pain, mister? Real pain, screaming, crying, begging pain. I will put you to a fire, have you praying for your death. Eyes all white, mouth a quivering. I get you. You're gonna suffer, mister. Sure I am. Yep, I bet I am. I love how this guy, I mean, this guy's efforts are futile. 
This guy has no power here. Like, I feel like the guy, like, you have no power here. You think they want me alive? They won't know what to do with me. The judge gonna let me go so I can come and find you. They yeah. want me dead and buried and all forgotten about. That right. I don't know, I find people in positions like this to be fascinated to some extent. Like, like, look what this guy's doing. The only thing that this guy knows is to scare the shit out of people. That's it. So he's going to what he knows right now while he's captive. Thinking it's somehow going to work. It's an, an adaptation in an improper context. That gets people into trouble even when they're not being dipshits while they're riding on the back of a horse hogtied. Go ahead and parade you down the streets of Blackwater, sir. Excuse me, folks. I like how this guy doesn't even have his hat with him. Blackwater police. Yes, indeed. Come on, Mr. Green. Shit. Come on, Green. Let's get you inside. God damn it. I'll bite you. Yeah, yeah. Where do I put him, sir? Got you that Skinner, brother. Elias Green. Set me down. Elias Green is a living breed. God damn it. Put him in a cell. You ain't got a rope strong enough for me, Sheriff. Justice will be That's done true. and done quick. Says the guy with rope strong enough for him. Alright, have fun, buddy. Have, have fun talking mad shit while you're in a very non-powerful position. I would like my ninety dollars, please. That man ain't worth spit. But here's what we're paying for him. You don't mean that, do you, Chief? I'll take it. Thank you. You're Thank making you, an sir. old chief's life a little easier, you know. How about coming back in a while, picking up another poster? Death on you. Death on you in blackness. I just feel bad for this guy. He's he's got a he's got a he's got to listen to this guy. Like he probably wishes I'd have brought him dead so he doesn't have to listen to him. All right, let's go see what this feller wants. What's your problem? I don't really know who this guy is, but. Take a gander. Good morning. Uh, is there a way to get in there? Love this hat. This hat's growing on me. This hat's growing on me. Excuse me, sir. You work here? Nice no, suit. I just hang around here for fun. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Are you? Are you joking? Not okay. You, it's a good joke. I know this sounds crazy. Some dumb old coot I know is telling me there's these houses you can buy pre-cut. <laughs> Not crazy, friend. The very latest in modern convenience. Convenient and cost efficient. Which hey, house the catalog. Each one is entirely unique, but also the same. Excuse me? <laughs> Do you want to buy a house? I think so. I'll give you a luxurious, entirely unique pre-cut palace. And if you order today, I guarantee you're home in a matter of weeks, maybe sooner. I'll take that one. Ah, yes, we have that one in stock. And I already got credit from the bank. Oh, fantastic. You write your name here, and uh, you sign your name there, and you will be the proud owner of a factory-built home. It's that easy. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Martin. Albert Cakes, Esquire, at your service. You boys, Esquire. Oh Jesus! <sighs> what are you doing here? 
Everything okay? I'm not sure. Probably. A fella came by the farm. Got attacked on the road. He said the Skinner brothers was hanging around. Lots of them. I left Uncle armed to the teeth back at the ranch. Who are these two? Guns for hire. This Skinner's about, we need them. We ain't got that kind of money, Charles. You want to get robbed for your house? No, but... Hey, these Skinner's gonna be nasty. Come on. Mr. Devon, you're with me. Mr. Wayne, this is... Milton. Jim Milton. Sir, good to meet you. We're gonna be heading up to the Manzanita Post. Why? The best smith around is that Norwegian fella up there. Yeah, so they say. You boys ready? Yes, sir, we're ready. Good, because you're about to get shot at over a goddamn hammer. You want to build a house with a sniper rifle, then? I know old Neil's real well. I'll get you a good deal. Thank you, sir. All right, then. Let's go buy us some tools. I know the quickest way. Oh, boy. Follow me. Oh, boy. The hat is the greatest hat I've worn in this entire game. I love the hat so much. It's perfect. Big hat. It's funny because it's bigger than a regular hat. Is your friend a Negro or a Redskin? I think a bit of both for what it's worth. Cash is cash. Though it's all the same to me. I yeah, okay. Skittish there, but don't you worry. We're not getting shot at. Oh, yeah. I know Charles Smith. If he's got cause to be concerned, it's usually good cause. You got a shotgun messenger sitting right beside you, all right? Now, suppose you don't know much about robbing caravans. Not much, I guess. <laughs> no. Well, nor do I. But I know a thing or two about protecting them. And if a robber sees some strong men sitting up front, two of them guns for hire, then they're gonna wait for the next set of fools to come on through. Unless they take the guns to mean they're carrying something valuable. Instead of pre-cut timber and some tools. What? No. Wait, look, trust me on this. You are overthinking it. You hire a gun, you hire peace of mind and a deterrence. So I'll sit here looking big and scary, and you can concentrate on the horses. All right. I'll do just that. Maybe I've done this kind of thing before, and maybe I can handle a weapon. But I'm not so different from you, partner. I think you might be. People wonder how you can handle it, living by your gun. But it's the same as any other occupation, really. When I get home, I put my gun on the rack and it stays there. I mean it, it, it really stays there. I don't even think about it. My mind's on my wife and the little ones. I'm chopping wood, mending the roof, putting the kids to bed. But when I'm out here, I'm watching the tree line. I got my gun at the ready. And I'm trying to make my employer as comfortable as possible. That's, uh, real good of you. You're in good hands. I know this country well. Good. <laughs> okay, man. Cool. <laughs> Whatever makes you feel better about yourself, brother. You know what, though? Whatever. You listen to the man talk. John doesn't have to. You know, I, I respect John for not interjecting there. Let the guy have his moment. Like, what harm does it do to let the guy talk? It really doesn't. You know, sometimes just let people talk. Let people hear their own voice. There's so many people enter engagements with this idea that they have to respond or rebut every single thing that gets brought up in a conversation. You don't have to. Sometimes you just listen to folks. They'll fill the space. If you really need them to shut up, you can say it. But like, you know, whatever. Let the guy talk. Am I finally going to meet this tool maker? Now, Niels, he's an acquired taste, but boy, can he work metal. Norwegian, you see? Viking blood. Fellas up there used to worship a god with a hammer. Guess I figures they'd still be making them. I'm not sure how much English he speaks, but Niels knows tools. And he knows me, so 
so we'll see if we can get him to give you some. They won't be free. They won't even be cheap. But they'll be worth what you pay. I've already bought a house and hired you today. So might as well keep spinning while I'm at it. You won't regret it. I hope not. You can always earn more money. The good tools sure. will last you a lifetime. He's not wrong. It's true. Get yourself some well-made tools. This is the spot. Just up ahead. Okay. You boys wait here. After you, Mr. Milton. Acquire some tools. Okie dokie. Will do. Buy your tools, John. I want to get out of here. Yeah, me too, Charles. Dude, Charles is one of the like most I impatient said, NPCs. Is, uh, an acquired taste. Let me do the talking. Sure thing, Wayne. There he is, working away. You do your thing, buddy. You and your beard. <laughs> Nails. Nails, it's me. Willard Wayne. Okay. This is my associate, Jim Milton. Okay. He heard you was the best. Best smith around. Okay. He needs some tools. He's building a ranch house up at Beecher's Hope. Beecher's Hope? Okay. Have you got any made? Uh, okay. Like I said, an acquired taste, but a heart of gold, and he's the best. You off someplace, Nils? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I love this. And believe it or not, I am going to use this as an opportunity to talk about something with interpersonal relationships and with, like, interactional dynamics. So... We carry a certain set of expectations for interpersonal exchanges. And when people violate those expectations and how they show up in a situation like this, it can really throw us off because we we all of a sudden can't just get into the lane that we were anticipating we could get into. And it creates awkwardness. And what happens oftentimes within that awkwardness is people will over-focus on how to try to get the person that is throwing it all off to assimilate into what their expectation of the dynamic was going to be instead of taking it for what it is. This guy's a man of few words, apparently, at least from what we've seen so far. If you allow yourself to take this as it comes and respond to what happens, instead of putting a bunch of pressure on the situation to be something it isn't, you're going to get lost in a bunch of hypothetical what ifs. Okay, so we, we assess the situation here. You take a second and you look at what you're working with. We're working with a guy who uses few words. He has thrown off our expectations. Let's change our expectations for the encounter and let's respond accordingly instead of trying to force it into something it isn't. It's a very important interactional tool set to have in your box, no pun intended given the current circumstance, that will help sometimes in social situations that are not what you're expecting because people are dynamic and complex and different and no interaction is ever going to be the same as the, as the last one. Can I get an okay? So Milton is uh, working with Cakes Hardwood and Timber in town. Should I get them to pay you and add it to his bill up there? Okay. <laughs> I love it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. Beecher's home. Oh, man. They've been trying to <laughs> for some time, hadn't they? Took a look at it myself, as it so happens. Seemed like a lot of work. Too much for me. 
But more power to you. Must have seen something in it I couldn't. <laughs> oh shit! Oh! Wayne, no! Wayne! Everyone find some brother! I thought you weren't gonna get shot! Oh, I want that guy's hat. Oh, shit! Holy shit! Some... I need my big hat. I lost confidence without my hat. Oh, God. Eat a little something, John. What are you doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? No, I need my hat. Mr. Devin, you okay? Yes. Got the last of them? I think so. There's more. They got the tools. They grab Mr. Wayne. All right, you stay here. Guard the wagon. Charles, come no! on. No! Pancake, thank you for the five bucks. I need my hat. I'm in class. Why don't we just? Oh man, it sounds terrible. Like, why don't we just let Wayne go? Come on. We have to get past them. They climbed up in the tree. Shoot the windows back first. Up in the tree. What? John! Oh my god, John. I missed my hat. That's all I can think about. Got the tools at least. Found the tools. Now, where's Mr. Oh shit. Alright. Shit. Jesus. We gotta move fast. Come on. 
Why are we carrying him, dude? He's dude, he's gone. Leave him. Back to the road. Charles. God damn it. A few minutes ago he was chewing my ear off. He knew what he was getting into. Did he? Skinner. Yeah, did he? Everyone knows. Except me. Later, John. Charles, you all right carrying him? I got it. There's no use in you getting bloody too. Is he... is it bad? Okay, so I understand why everybody is like, don't leave him, but... Okay. Carrying him is a huge liability. There are so many of them. We have no way of knowing whether we actually killed all of them. They could come out of the bushes at any moment. They could have reinforcements coming up the street. I don't know about you, but I don't know that I want to risk my life on the off chance that a family can get some closure. Like, I, we got to survive. If we could get back to the wagons and survey the area and make sure we're safe, and we could always go back and get them. But carrying the man on your shoulders is a liability right now. It's a harsh reality. They opened him up pretty good. Uh, they chopped his head in two. God damn them. Uh -huh. Mr. Wayne didn't make it. Here, or no. We have to get out of here. You take him in the back wagon. Come on, help me. I want my hat. All right, let's get out of here. I'm big sad. I'm big sad right now. Get us back to beaches. Those were the Skinner brothers. I told you I was worried. Sadie said something too. What kind of land have I bought? It's not the land. Skinners move around. They're here for now. I thought this this kind of bloodshed was meant to be over with. What was all the nonsense about civilization? This kind of bloodshed is different. Folks have been killed, sure. For good reason and bad. But rarely just for the fun of it. That was fun for them? No. Not that time. Most folk don't usually put up with such a fight. Uncle! That was really Uncle! close to my house. You useless sack of crap. I was keeping guard. Really? Whoa. What happened? Skinner Brothers. A lot of them? Enough. Once this is done, I'll take Mr. Devin back to town and get poor Mr. Wayne buried. Okay. Be careful. Oh, I will. But I'm fairly sure we scared him off for now. Bad business. Well, we'll be safe together. Will we? Sure. You say so. Miss my big hat. And John, I love you. Don't you forget that. Bank loan received of eight hundred dollars. Good morning. Morning. Damn. Um.
I'm actually pretty happy with how John looks. I don't know that I need to change this up much. All right, little cow hand. Like that. Want a big hat though. Big a hat as I'ma get. All right, uncle. What do you need, brother? You looking at the instructions. Those plans make any sense? Oh, sure. Seems easy enough, I think. How hard can it be? <laughs> but I'll tell you what I think, just to be safe. I'll do the reading and planning, and you do the building. How did I know you'd try to weasel out of doing any work? Oh, now, that is plain unfair. It, it's inaccurate and not what's going to happen. I'm simply going to use what I've got, which is a brain. Why you use what you've got, which is less of a brain. <laughs> Let's get started. Well... First thing it says, the foundation, which involves moving those heavy wooden joists. Definitely not a job for a man with terminal lumbago, unless you want to dig a six-foot-deep hole for me when the work day's over. Don't tempt me. Oh, here comes Charles. Maybe he can lighten the mood a little. How'd you get on? I'll be back, but not for a while. Charles, dear boy, John needs help moving these joists. Now, come on. Get a move on. We gotta get started before the rains come. You're very annoying. <laughs> right. Should get on with this. huge house in the snow or the rain or the ice cold wind whenever no matter what the weather we're together Built a chimney and everything. Yeah. Climb up a ladder with a hammer and a nail, I'll nail it. 
Well, we worked so hard to build a little house together In the snow or the rain or the ice cold wind whenever No matter any weather We're together That was awesome. And I think that's everything. That was awesome. <laughs> John Marston, you have a home. So do you. Oh, I know. And you, Charles, as long as you'll stay with us. You know what? I'm changing my tune a little bit from yesterday because of the fact that Uncle and Charles showed up here. This is what I was talking about yesterday when I said if you could surround yourself by folks that are going to support the stuff you do. Charles and Uncle being here with John, building this house, supporting him in doing this, that's some real, that's some real good energy. So John's saying you guys have a home with me now. That's great. I, like, I'm all for it now. They showed up. They're supporting John. Now, I'm sure there's an angle for Uncle here, right? He doesn't have much beyond this, so... He's, I know he's angling for something, but you know what? I can appreciate their support in this endeavor. John still gets to set the rules. John gets to set the expectations and the boundaries. But this is them showing up for him. And I, I admire that. I, I give them credit for that. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen. To this happy home. Well, at least till this fool gets his woman back. <laughs> uh, glad you understand, Uncle. Look at that. My darling Abigail. I hope you and Jack are doing well. I remain a fool, and I'm sure I shall die a fool. But I'm trying very hard to be something like the man you deserve. I have done something very silly in an effort to impress you. And that is, I've purchased a home. The land you read about in the newspaper up at Beecher's Hope is now ours, and we are going to try our hand at ranching. Mr. Geddes kindly helped me buy the land. I met Uncle while I was coming out of the bank, and while I know your feelings about him, he has been enormously helpful in his own fashion. Charles Smith has also appeared and is unsurprisingly a pillar of strength. Together, we've built you a home. I hope soon to show it to you. I miss you and the boy more than I can express. Please, come back to me. Yours always, John. Good for you, John. He should be so proud of himself. Where the hell? That's awesome. Uh, one thing I want to say about uh, Arthur's note. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's awesome that he did this. If there was gonna be, I, I wouldn't call this a critique, but it's something to consider. Which is that John also at some point. 
I think, has to bring himself to see this as something that he's not just doing for Abigail, but also for himself. Because it is a lot of pressure on Abigail to have to reassure John that all of these efforts are not in vain. It's okay for him to do this for Abigail. It's okay if he wants her back. I, I, I respect the effort. But John is not entitled to Abigail. If Abigail still can't bring herself to be with John, John's going to have to find something else to sink his hooks into, which is why it's very important for all of us to consider the things we do as not just being something that we do for others. But why does it matter for us? Because relying on other people for constant reinforcement of who we are or constant adoration is not healthy. Because people have their own lives to live. They have their own convictions, their own agendas, their own desires. And if they don't intersect and you've been overly relying on other people to reinforce your sense of self, you're going to feel lost within that. So jo John can look at this house and say, you know what? Even if this doesn't appeal to Abigail, even if Abigail says, I'm not ready to come back to you, John. I'm proud that I did this because I set off to be on a mission to do something different. To be a better man, to live the right way, to live in a way that's more aligned with my values. And now I have a physical symbol of what I have worked to build. And that is impressive in and of itself. It doesn't have to be all about Abigail. And if she decides to come to the house, it's the same thing. Like, I did this for you, Abigail, but I also did this for me. And I, there is something that will very likely be attractive to Abigail about that because we are attracted to people who have passions for things, who have strong convictions, who are uh, akin to self-efficacy. And he would do well to engage with that. So, it's worth considering. Uh, I'm going to use the restroom really quick. Be right back. Okay. Me again. God, what a geez house. All right, Uncle, where you at, brother? Uncle is lazing about. Of course he is. Just one time I hope to find you working. Just once. Do you believe in reincarnation, John Marston? No. Well, I hope and pray to whatever is out there that I get to come back as a youngin' so that when you're old and facing death, I can be some two-penny slave driver that comes along and hastens your journey into the grave. This is a fatal condition I got. And I'll give you another fatal condition. We don't get on with things around here, and we'll all starve. Get on with what? Farming, ranching, planting something. Oh, the only thing that this land's good for is grazing. Grazing? Yeah, so so cows, sheep, goats. Now, goats is easy, but they taste awful. I don't like goats. 
And cows, I've seen enough cows. Yeah, sheep then. But any livestock, you're gonna need a barn. Barn will take three of us six months to build. Oh, you don't build a barn, dumbass. What do you think this is, 1785? <laughs> You buy one pre-cut just like the house. This is the industrial age. The lumber fellers all have them. That guy makes me hate the modern world. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'll deal with them. I can't move. Like what is this, 1785? <laughs> oh, man. I gotta say, you know what? If there's anything I can appreciate about Uncle, it's that he is consistent. He is absolutely consistent. Exactly the same thing. And no shit. Thinking about it? Huh. I might actually do this on my own. Oh, I can't let you do that, John. Let you get robbed again? <laughs> oh, no. You need someone with some sense to negotiate. And some charm wouldn't hurt neither. Well, and that's you, is it? With your famous way with people? Ah, you're in enough debt as it is. I got to help you all I can. It's my debt. I'll handle it. Yeah, but if they foreclose on the debt, I'll lose my home. And I do so like it there. You like it too much. You're far too comfortable. Ah, you ain't even got furniture. Well, he's honest. Come on, girl. You're okay. He does have some Dutchisms, though. He's just kind of a freeloader. Make everybody else do the work. You know. He is consistent, though. And I think in some ways he's endearing to John. I, I think in some ways he's endearing to John because of his Dutchisms. John knows what this is like. He knows what it means to have somebody along that's kind of a freeloader that he works his ass up for and has poor boundaries. That's what he dealt with with Dutch for a long ass time. That's who he followed. So, you know, again, if you're like, man, why, why would you keep Uncle around here? I mean, it, it is the case that John is used to this. I still don't know that I consider Uncle to be a great influence, but he definitely put some karma in the bank by assisting with the house, even if it was for self-interest. This is him. All right. Speak to the lumber salesman. Sir, I'd like to build me a barn. And how are we? We're How's in the same Emily? thing, huh? Emily. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, uh, um, how are you? <laughs> we need a barn. A barn? Of course you do. All them potatoes. We're gonna uh, farm livestock. What's wrong with you? How many Scarface loons you got coming in here buying pre-cut uh, homes? Here, uh, what you think? Uh, have a look. <laughs> Maybe that one. Uh, that We're one. an excellent choice. We have a couple already cutting in stock. I'll have it sent to you in Blackwater. I'm down at Beecher's Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, it's my wife, Jerry. You see, she's out. Uh, it, it's great seeing you again, Al. Yeah, it's, and it's you, been a sir. pleasure as always. Great pleasure. Love your work. Of course. How are we going to pay for this? <laughs> Same way we pay for everything. I just wish I could help you, sir. You've been a good customer, and I like you, and David Geddes likes now, you. I, I, but I, this man <laughs> is very annoying. Can you just give me a few days? Of course. I really enjoy begging and watching you make a fool of yourself. Well, I... John! Hey! Is that Sadie Adler? <laughs> hey. John, how are you? Well, hello, Uncle. Nice to see you. Oh, and you too. Oh, shut up, you old creep. <laughs> Listen, Sadie, I... You got any work? I'm kind of desperate. Work? Hmm. How desperate? I need money. A bunch of money. My debt's climbing, and I... 
You up for a fight? Is it legal? <laughs> well, it's very legal, but it's also pretty dangerous. With you, it'll be fine, but I wouldn't do it on my own. I ain't got much choice. All right, then. Come on. <laughs> Look after him, Sadie. He's a delicate flower underneath. Tell the bank there's money coming in. And get a crew to help with that barn. I have it on good authority we can find this bounty at Painted Sky. I know the place. Okay, I'll follow you. Oh you know, boy. I've been doing some bounty hunting of my own since I last saw you. I ain't gonna make a habit of it. So, I, 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 a little bit of a word about Uncle. I, I think that Uncle knows that he is not useful to me. I think he knows. He's, I don't think he's an idiot. And the way that he interacts with the group is a series of compensations for the insecurity that they may actually dump him. He's doing everything he can to be useful or at the very least endearing so that the group doesn't cut him out. He very much has a vibe that he puts out where if you're not careful, you might feel a little too sorry for him. And feeling sorry for him is what pushes people to not hold boundaries. It's very much learned helplessness that he then throws out into his into the group dynamic. And the group dynamic enables it. Are there some legit health concerns? Yes. I'm not trying to act like Uncle's super able-bodied and able to do everything that John and Charles are able to do. But he has learned how to use that helplessness to make him seem like a dramatic figure that you got to keep around it for no other reason than because you feel bad for it. And people allow it. They talk a big game in his presence, but nobody actually holds him accountable. So he continues to get away with being the way that he is because we've reinforced it. Uh, hard to say, Iceman. All right. I don't really know that I would call this taking care of John. But I don't know how long it'll stay that way. An encyclopedia salesman was up there on the property. Couldn't find the rancher, but saw a Mexican-looking feller hanging around. Now, Ramon Cortez is round those parts. Split up from his gang and stuck in West Elizabeth. It's gotta be him. Hold up, waiting on some out. And we're gonna get to him first. Hey, so who is this bounty? Ramon Cortez. He's with the Del Lobo guy. Don't get too far ahead. Well, how about you keep up, Sadie? Always was. So, you were saying? Like you were saying before. Del Lobos? Yeah. You head back down to where we was, New Austin, you're bound to run into them. Oh, I ran into them. Mostly Mexicans. Some of them, but some is Californios. And some are regular Americans, too. They're a misfit bunch. Just like we were. And they're friendly. Real friendly. Oh, yeah. Ugh, it's a bad situation down there. Burnings, killings, you name it. I know something of that. And not much law except the sheriff of Tumbleweed. He's making a hell of a go of it, but... There ain't much there to hold back the chaos. It's real wild country. Sounds like he needs all the help he can get. Maybe drop in on him sometime. You know, I had some trouble of my own. That gang you was talking about? Was they the Skinner brothers? That's them. They ain't nice. Nice? Weren't what I heard about them. Got a hold of this fella I'd hired. Ah, oh, he didn't die well. Mm, I'm sorry, John. We fought back. We was too slow, was all. I wish we'd done better for him. I'm sure you did the best you could. I've heard, well, oh, the kinds of things they do to men. Unspeakable things. I hope that's the last you see of them. Me too. But if not, I mean to be ready. That is wise. You want to hear something? I built my ranch house. Good for you. Did you make it out of straw bales? No. <laughs> <laughs> but 
It's one of them pre-cut ones. Me and Charles put it up, and Uncle watched and barked the odd order at us. It's solid, though. Real good and sturdy. Woo! John Marston's got his own house. You should come see it. It's good. John, she ain't gonna do it. Despite all that. I try not to fraternize too much with employees. You know, it sends the wrong message. Good boundaries. Oh, that's what I am now. An employee. Mm-hmm. That's what the bank says. Oh, well then I guess our fraternizing days are done. Now, be a good boy and get this bounty for me. Yes, ma'am. Way to be a good sport about it, John. Also, Chris, it's very kind of you to say. As we make this ride, I just want to say I appreciate all of you being here. Whether you're here live or whether you're watching the VOD, thank you for supporting what I do. I hope these streams are meaningful to you in some way. I very much enjoy bringing them to you. Uh, I... The epilogue has actually been a lot of fun. I'm glad we've taken the time to play as John. It's it's it feels like an entirely different game, weirdly enough. But uh, I hope that my analysis maybe adds a little bit of extra to the game if you played it before and if this is your first time going through the game thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the one that shepherd you through it make sure you sh thumbs up if you like the stream make sure you follow me turn on notifications i'm live at 9 30 p.m and if you provided any kind of financial support whether buying merch becoming a member or tipping thank you very much for your support of my channel it means a lot so, big cheers to all of you. Oh, and leave a comment. I love reading them. I may not respond to it, but I do read all of them. All right, let's speed up. Doesn't sound like we got much more to say. Sky up here. Looks quiet. Ramon Cortez, you better be here. Let's get down and take a look. You search that. Barn. I'll take the main house. Holler if you get him. Investigate the barn. All right. I think so. He just tried to kill me. That's about right. Jesus. Yeah, that's him. Come on. Let's get him to the sheriff. Come on, Ramon. Let's go for a ride. We're going to Rhodes. Rhodes? It's different. No way it was that easy. No way. That hurt. You want money? Gold? My men are meeting me at Dewberry Creek. Take me there. I'll pay you good. There isn't any bounty. Oh, shut up. We'll cross up here. Come on. The roads, huh? Up 
Right where my man Sean died. Bring Cortez around the front for me, will you? I'll get them ready for you. Mr. Sheriff? Mr. Sheriff, we got Ramon Cortez. Cortez? Sure did. Well done, Hal. Found him hiding in a pile of shit. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> How you doing, Ramon? Oh, just fine, mister. <sighs> <sighs> hey, how much you want? How much any of you want? I'll give $2,000 in gold to whichever one of you sets me free. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, Ramon. You've been a real bad boy. Me and my boys are going to ride you into San Denis and watch them hang you. <laughs> okay. Okay, if you think so, mister. <laughs> oh, I know so, Ramon. Take a seat. Help me guard them till my boys arrive and we can get them out of here. Sure. Uh, spent years cleaning up this town. Last thing I need is fools like this thinking they can take us back to the bad old days. Well, you did a good job. No, Sadie. What? <sighs> God, I hate shooting handguns. Jesus. Getting out strafed like crazy. Oh my God. Put me on horseback, I'm good. Put me stationary and I can't hit shit. on the other side now pay us what's owed he ain't here now madam i don't get paid unless he makes it to san denis you want to get shot today as well as rob mister are you threatening me why would we bother threatening you get him back and i'll get your money 
And another fifty dollars besides. A hundred dollars. Seventy-five. I can't go higher. Done. Let's go, Jim Milton. Mount up. Where are we gonna find him? He said there were men meeting him at Dewberry Creek. Let's start by looking there. Sure. You bet. Okie dokie. Bad luck with bounties being stole off of you. And you're about to have some bad luck with getting punched in the face. He got stole off both of us. Someone must have talked. Ugh, one of his boys, maybe. We were sitting ducks, waiting all that time in that Jim Crack jailhouse. Yeah, yes we were. I don't like it. The sheriff's done a lot to bring roads into line since the time of the Greys and Braithwaite's, but clearly he ain't done enough. So you think we can trust him? Yeah, he'll pay up when we come back with Cortez. He's a decent fella. If we come back with Cortez? We're coming back with him. Don't you worry about that. It's not a thing, isn't it? We'll take $200 from... Hey! It's an odd thing, isn't it? We'll take $200 from a sheriff who might be crooked himself to go get a bounty. But we won't take $2,000 from an outlaw just to let him go. If that kind of offer is tempting to you, then go right ahead. But not when you're on one of my jobs. I never said I was tempted by it. I just said it was an odd thing. How we... Take money from one, but not the other. Everyone's got to choose what they're loyal to. Themselves, God, the state. If a bounty hunter wants to last, the loyalty's got to be to the one that's issuing the bounties. Plain and simple. I got a reputation for honest work. So, everyone with the price on their head deserves it, you think? Sure. No, I don't know. Usually, if I got into who deserved what, Second guess every poster? I'd tear out all my hair before I put a rope on anyone. If the price is high enough, you got to trust there's a reason they said it. I hope that rationale works out for all of us. Such a powerful metaphor for how much more complicated the world becomes when you actually think about it. Like, there is real calmness and ease in just gliding through letting other people tell you what to do not thinking about stuff you start thinking about things critically you start trying to connect complex concepts kind of like what john's trying to do you see sadie's reaction to it is to try to get him off and doing that it's thinking about things and being critical about the world around you is distressing it causes a lot of anxiety for folks and many people don't have the distress tolerance for that. And so they would rather bail out into what they know and, and not thinking about the world. Take it as is. Take everything surface level. Assume that, you know, whatever intent you want to assume about whatever's come your way and stay in your lane. Uh, it's why so many really intelligent folks will struggle with existential depression. Because when you really start to think about things, it becomes pretty tough for your brain. A lot of abstract concepts to consider now that we don't really have all the answers to. Right? Pick something to be loyal to. And once you're loyal to that, don't question it. I mean, that was Dutch's entire MO. Don't ever question the thing you're loyal to. Loyalty's okay. easy. Down there. Fire. I'd wager that's them. Stay on the road. Let's find a good vantage point. Uh, Barely, that's a really hard question for me to answer. I would need more specifics and need to know about the relationship and a person's barriers and insecurities and all sorts of stuff. Like, the best I can say would be, you know, something like, be as authentic as possible, communicate openly and directly. Up here. Come on. Uh, set and maintain no and listen to boundaries. There it is. That's really all I can say without knowing your specific a relationship. Look at before we do anything. Hold. 
By the way, it's good to see you, friend. Spider, good to see you as well. Come on. They must be camping down there. Why are they hanging around? Probably waiting for a boat. Uh, there's supposed to be a storm coming through, so maybe that's delayed them. Perhaps. So what do we do now? I'm gonna go get them. You. Me. You just cover me. I ain't getting you killed out there. But it's okay for you. I, I want to die. And besides, those bastards don't look that tough. I, they look asleep as far as I can tell. I'm gonna go. You sure about this? Just don't seem right. This is my show, John Marston. Do as you're goddamn told. And shoot well. Hell, no wonder she's doing bounties then. I wanna die. Wish I could talk to her more about why. You could at least tell me that that's not a guy I'm supposed to shoot. I'm coming. Again.
die right now, Cortez! <laughs> I'm going to die anyway! So you really want me to shoot you? You might get lucky in court! Get over here! All right, all right, amigo! Coming! Try anything clever, you're gonna get shot! Oh, hold your horses, chica! Get out of there! <laughs> I said, get out of there! Easy, easy, girl! Oh, you gave up easy a long time oh. ago! <sighs> hey, look out! There's more of them coming. Hey! Estoy aquí! Shut your gut down! mouth! Might just be. Son of a bitch. Well, that's that, man. Help me load this fool on the horse. A lot of crazy bastards. Seems Mexico's a tough place. <laughs> Too tough for you, John Marston. I'd stay well clear. Oh, I mean to, Mrs. Adler. Let's get out of here. Uh. I'm back, girl. It's about time we collected this bounty. Second time. Bounty. <laughs> What do you think, Cortez? You got any more surprises up your sleeve? You, you're a dead woman. And you are a dead man. The Belovos will not forgive this. <laughs> Wherever you hide, we will find you. And we will kill you. You and anyone who is close to you. I preferred it when you was offering money. Oh, you want money? Hey, take my money. I got gold, lady. But you were just saying you was gonna kill me. Oh, you let me go? I'll forget about all this. You see, Ramon, what we got here is a trust issue. Oh, I'm good for it. You're tied up on a horse, about to be taken to San Denis to hang. You ain't good for anything. Listen, I swear. Of course, because all you can do is swear. But you're just saying anything you think might get you out of this. Ramon! I couldn't trust you to pay me. I couldn't trust you not to kill me. Hell, I couldn't even trust you to kill me, if that's what <laughs> we agreed. What the hell are you talking about? I got gold, woman. Mister, gold. Five thousand dollars. Well, I hope you left it to someone in your will. Because you ain't going to find much use for it in the short time you got left. I damn you, woman. Damn you! Oh, I've been damned a long time, my friend. Relax, mister. We ain't got far to go. Oh, you made a big mistake. Both of you. You should have took the money. You should have taken it. Now, now we're gonna come for you. I promise you that. We're gonna come for you! Well, I hope they know just where to find me. Because I'll enjoy the fight. I like the fight, Ramon. The fighting and the killing. This guy's got nothing. Here we are. Back again. Looks like. With a jail that's got a hole blown out the back of it. Own Cortez. Come on. The sheriff better move him quick this time. No we shit. We got him, Sheriff. Well, he got him. I knew you'd be back, Ramon. You just can't get enough of me. Put him in the wagon for me, would you? How's hey, it uh, feel? Needs to get fixed up since this nice man blew a hole in it. Me and the boys will ride him to San Denis right away this time. Come along, Cortez. Sheriff, before you go. I'll pay you when I deliver him. Plus $75. Exactly. Now, goodbye. Let's go, boys. I'll see you soon, amigos. Shut up. <laughs> Thanks for this, John. You send my money to the bank for me. Of course. I'm supposed to be retired from this. This? For nothing. Just a simple arrest. Money for old rope. 
If you say so. See you around, partner. John, the only way you get out of this is to stop agreeing to doing it, buddy. You don't get to blame everybody else for getting you in this when you're the one that keeps agreeing to it. You'll be fine, girl. Stay put. Bathroom? Bathroom. <clears throat> I could use a shave. Look at that. You got a hot bath? Guess this is uncle's room. living in the barn now the deal how was your holiday i was making money and to think you call me lazy you've done a great job well that crew did help a house a barn look at this place <laughs> i can't believe it Thank you. Thank you both. This calls for a drink. Young Miss at Dancing School has taught the minuet to tread. Young Miss at Dancing School has taught the minuet to tread. But we go better when we brought our four tack to cat head. Come bustle, bustle, drink about and let us merry be. Our can is full, we'll pump it out and then all hands to see. When horn and hounds the forest rend, his pack the huntsman cheers. When horn and hounds the forest rend, his pack the huntsman cheers. As loud as halloo when we send a broadside to Mount Sears. As loud as halloo when we send a broadside to Mount Sears. Come bustle, bustle, drink about and let us merry be. Our can is full, we'll pump it out and then our hands to see. What's got at sea we spend on shore on sweethearts and our wives? What's got at sea we spend on shore at sweethearts and our wives? And then my boys hoist sail for more, thus passes sailors' lives. And then my boys hoist sail for more, thus passes sailors' lives. Come bustle, bustle, and let, and let us, us merry be. Our can is full, let's bright it out, and then our hands to see. Yeah! <laughs> John! Get out here! Uncle's gone! He's fine. Let me sleep. Get out here now! <sighs> that fat man will be fine. No, he won't. Skinners. Oh, no way. You think? Of course. My guess is they went that way. But my other guess is they know we're coming after them. What choice do we have? None. We have a choice. Our wits about us. We know this is a trap. I get it. I get why we're going. We do have a choice. Let's go. Oh, this is not good. I tracked them to the road. We'll pick up the trail there. Shit. It's like we forgot about them. We should have been ready. It happened. There's nothing we can do except try and get him back. 
we let our guards down for one moment. Hush. Charles is 100% in the right here. In a moment of crisis that demands action, judgment for the circumstances that led up to the point that you're at is useless. John sitting here and going, we shoulda, we shoulda, we shoulda, adds nothing to the moment. Charles forcing John to stay in the present and focus on what we have to do now and responding to the circumstances is exactly what needs to happen. We waste way too much time hindsight judging circumstances that led up to stuff like this. Uncle doesn't get taken. We don't judge what happened. Uncle gets taken. We have to respond to it. Focus on what you have to do to get through a moment instead of wasting time judging yourself for how you managed to get to where you are. There will be time to look back on what you did and ask yourself what better decisions can you make in the future as, as a result. But you have to respond now when there is a crisis like this. So good for Charles for getting John back into the present. Up here. You see that? Blood. Dear Lord. They've gone up towards tall trees. Come on. John, look. We should agree on something. If it's really bad, this might not be about saving it. What the hell are you talking about? If it's oh, wow. really bad, it might be better to stop the pain. Jesus, you mean to... I mean, you can live a week without a scalp, but it ain't a good week. A gut wound, you can live a month, but it's horrible. What they've done to him might have killed him already, with only hurt to come. We get him? And we see, okay? We'll make it his call if we can. But it may be we have to decide. Okay? Okay. Good for you, Charles. Man, set the expectation. Create a plan. Did you hear something? Look out! Yeah. You think they saw us coming? I don't know. I guess we'll soon find out. We'll be better off going on on foot. Okay. Leave the horses in the trees there. Stay. To the trees. Come on. There, to the right. Two Skinners. Lookouts? Probably. Take one. I'll take the other. They're down. Move. They were waiting for us. Uncle should be close. He better be. Keep your head. We'll find him. Come on. Hold. Patrol to our left. Shh. Easy. Easy. Hold it. Let him go. If they come from the ranch, they'll come this way. We should have burned it while they slept. The burning's better if they're awake for it. He's old and sick. He won't last long. Then when they come, they'll come for a corpse. Boy, these guys are just antagonistic with no reason, huh? He was talking about Uncle. He's alive. Mm. Come on. They've passed. Let's go. Ah, ah, ah. 
Hold up. You hear that? Yeah. Wagon. There. It's dragging someone. Is it uncle? No. Some other poor bastard. Let's follow. He might lead us to the camp. Stay with him. Jesus. Stopping. What do you see? He's picking up. The poor bastard's dead. If he's walking with the body, we must be close. Let's take him down before he gets to the rest. Take him out. Okay. Let's go. Poor I think guy. I see something. Uh huh. Yeah, that must be their camp. What do we do? Let's get up on that boulder. Take a look. <sighs> Hang in there, old man. Oh, that tells me this is not going to end well. Okay, okay. Can't see much through this mist. Can you look too? Hold on. Oh shit. Oh. My god. We got to go get him. Careful. Where are they? Where are they? Behind us? I don't care. Come on. Uh, Charles. Uh, 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 behind you. Like we got here just in time. God damn it. I'll carry him. Come on, Uncle. Come on. Here we go. Got him? Because here come the rest of them. Quick! There's more of them. I'll cover you. Come on. Down that gully. Come on. 
Come on, John. God, I am so close to death. Eat, John. Eat. Break through. Oh boy, oh boy. That's all I got. So we know uh, no food. We ain't out till we're home. Right hard, old man. How's the back? I think it looks worse than it is. Burns don't always heal easy. Sure, but I think this will be fine. As long as it don't get infected. It's much better than I feared. Hear that, old man? This could have been worse. He's pretty weak. Yeah, I bet. Stay with us, you old bastard. I'm feeling real weird. Man. Over you know, there. It's kind of terrifying. We're so used to being able to move. We can't move. We got to defend ourselves now. Easy. I don't feel good. Uncle. Uncle. Hey. We're here. All right. Let's get you done. Easy. I got you. I got you. Oh, man. Let's get him out. Oh, thank you, boys. Don't mention it. I was dead. Don't get all sentimental now, old man. And I'll really think you're dying. It's gonna be okay. A few days, you're gonna be just fine. You're a survivor. Easy, easy. Okay. He'll be fine. You think they'll be back? Maybe, but I doubt it. We must have killed most of them. Now, this is your land. Was it theirs once? I don't think so. I met a fellow said the Skinners rode down about two years ago. They're just angry men on a rampage, and we got in their way. Sort of like we used to be? <sighs> yeah, exactly like we used to be. Maybe we should take up torture. <laughs> uh, we got Uncle singing instead of torture. We're gonna be safe here, John. Hmm? You, your family, you all be safe. I hope so. I really do. If she ever comes back. Yeah, how do we even know the letter made it? No way. What the hell? You, you're. <laughs> I. You always did have that fine way with words. You doing all right, son? Sure, Pop. Can I go see the house? Sure. Give him some time. He'll warm up. It's quite a place you got here. It's yours. Ours. I should see about that boy. Who's my new rival? Oh, that's Rufus. He's loyal, dumb, and angry, so he reminded us of you. That's your idea of a joke, miss? I guess.
Man, they're lucky they didn't get intercepted by Skinners on their way here. Wow. Gail and Jack. That's, uh... Wow, I actually didn't know if they were going to come back. Great reward. I mean, it, it reinforces for John. You you do this stuff, you're going to... Good things going to come your way. I mean, I can appreciate that. I do hope, though, that... You know, Abigail can also find it in her to allow some conflict to happen. Like, you can't... You can't bail every single time. Like, we do... We do have to learn to work through our issues. You can't just bail and hold me against ultimatums. If you're Abigail. It just doesn't doesn't work that way. So, she better be able to put some work in here. You better be willing to put some work in here. I want to talk to What's up, buddy? How you getting on, son? Uh, fine, sir. What are you doing? Reading and, uh, playing with the dog. You wanna go fishing or something? Not particularly. I don't really like fishing. You do like eating, though, right? Because we gotta find some food. Come on, let's head this way to the stream. Okay, sir. Why you gotta be like that? I'm sorry. It's okay. Do you wish I was more like you? Like me? No, but let's keep going. Oh, answer the question though, John. Dogs scare the fish. But if you'd like him to, I guess. So you don't care if we don't catch fish? Yeah, I, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> at talking with you. But fishing will be fun. Sure. Unless you want nothing but beans again. No, I'd like to fish. And it'll be pretty fun, I promise. Okay. It's fine being out with you, even though I can't say the right thing. And you, Pop. We should... Let's do more of this. Sure. I, I mean, yes. I'd like that. Pretty countryside, ain't it? I guess. Grass and the light. There's a lot of ugly in this world, but sure as hell is a lot of beauty. Yes. You'll see it better when you get older. It's tough at your age. Just land and light. But to me, it's... It's... It's life. I... I can't explain it. Okay. What are you gonna be when you're older? Spider, thank you for the membership. Oh man, this is this is great because I mean on a lot of levels. I, John is putting the work in. John cannot expect Jack to just automatically like him back john needs to make sure he doesn't fall into the trap that so many parents fall into 
which is where they think because they're your parent, they are automatically entitled to know everything about you and are deserving of the benefit of the doubt at all times. That is not true. Your kids don't have to like you. Your kids don't have to reciprocate your efforts. That is not what they sign up for by being a kid. So if you're John here, you can empathize with that. And I think in his own way, he's trying to. But he might ask Jack, what do you like to do for fun? What would be meaningful time spent with me, like doing something you want to do? It's meaningful for me to spend time with you. He doesn't have to make excuses, right? Like, I, I want to put dinner on the table. We can eat some fish. I'd love it if you came with me. But he's at this really awkward crossroads with Jack where... Jack's learned experience to this point in his life is different than what John's was. John did have it harder than Jack did. John did have to learn a lot of these things, and it was necessary for him to survive when he was growing up. Jack has pretty much always been provided for. Jack hasn't had to be self-sufficient. In fact, they kept Jack out of everything. They just told him to play. They didn't get him involved early on in getting stuff done. The idea that Jack would have to be involved with this stuff is going to take time for him to learn. You can't just automatically expect that Jack understands he's got to do all this work. Is it important for Jack to do work? Does he need to have chores? Does he need to learn to do things he doesn't want to do because that's how you survive and how you contribute? A hundred percent. But you can't expect him to be at the end product of that immediately. John has to scaffold this process for him. I like that John takes ownership of the fact that this is awkward. I like that he... Uh, owns up to the fact that he's not very good at engaging with him. And I think he would do well to continue to empathize with that and to say to Jack, hey, I really want to make an effort, but I understand it's going to take a while. I'd appreciate if you gave me a chance, but I'm not expecting anything of you. But we are looking at very different levels of development, and John cannot expect Jack to have the wisdom that comes with all the lived experience that John has. Jack only has the wisdom of the lived experience. That I want to travel. See the world. That's a good idea. Then, become a lawyer and, and help people. That's not a lawyer, that's a... Are you laughing at me? No. Never. Just... Whatever you do, do it better than me and your mom. We had it. However we had it. We didn't make the most of it until now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see, Jack doesn't have... Jack's not super secure in his, in his convictions right now. I mean, to ask a kid his age to decide what to do when he grows up is kind of a weird question. But when John laughs, yeah, like, he's, there's a I good chance that Jack so might far. think that he's laughing at him. Because, again, Jack doesn't understand why it would be a little bit weird for John to have a son who's a lawyer. Yeah, this is a long walk. This spot close? John, want to respond to your kid, buddy? We can power walk it a little bit. A long way. Yes, it is, son. It's all right. Lean into the discomfort. Look at John and Jack have basically the same gait when they walk. Pretty great. But John, John's doing a good job here, right? Like, don't force conversation. Let the kid know that you're just comfortable with the fact that he's present with you. A lot of parents, too, they, especially when their kids get older, they try to force conversations with their kids. You don't have to do that. Your kid will approach you if you give them the opportunity.
This is a real good fishing spot. Folk always say that. <laughs> so hours Zine. later, they've caught nothing. Ain't you just the leading authority on everything? Well, ain't it so? Well, maybe. In this case, it's true. I hear there's some real big fish in here. Big old steelheads. Hard to catch, but real good eating. Hard to catch. Get your excuses in early. <laughs> Complaining know it all? Come on, son. I'm sorry. No, you ain't. It's all right. Come on, let's fish. Oh, man. Okay, so when you are the parent of a very intelligent child, you are presented with a choice. Do you appreciate that for what it is? Do you cultivate it? Do you reinforce it? Do you play with it? Or do you frame it in a way where you're threatened by it? Many parents inadvertently go in the direction of threatened because they believe that their role is to always know better than their children. And parents who are threatened by the intelligence of their children will often put down their children. They will exert force in ways that is not really conducive to forming a meaningful relationship with them. John already has some part of his self-image that he's not a very smart man. Jack is going to heighten that sense for him. John needs to make sure that he doesn't make his insecurities Jack's problem. That little interaction with him there where he gets kind of mean, calls him a complaining know-it-all, it's more about John than it is about Jack. And if you're a parent, you got to pay attention to what your kid is and how they are and what they're trying to accomplish. Too many parents take what their children say and do personally. Don't make it about you. Make it about them. They'll have a lot more meaningful relationship as a result. Uncle Hosea, he was the fisherman, wasn't he? That's right. I remember Uncle Arthur taking me, though. Arthur taught you how to fish now, did he? Huh, yeah. I suppose he did. That's nice. I got a bite. All right, Jack. Bite. All right. Now, stay calm and start reeling them in. Hey, me too. Not too fast. You want to set the hook in tight. He's, he's strong. You got him, buddy. Now, reel him in. Stay calm. Give him a tug. Now reel. I got a bluegill. All right. Good for me. <laughs> what do you think? How you feel? <laughs> I don't... I feel... I don't know. Thanks, Dad. I told you this was a good fishing spot. You did. Hey, my trip with Arthur, I remember now. I picked some flowers, and a couple of men showed up, dressed like they was from the city. No one like that's gonna show up here. Thank the Lord. Ask him what happened next. Where's Rufus? I don't know. Relax. He's a dog. Where is he, though? I don't know. I'll go find him. Rufus! Come on, boy! Rufus! Here, boy! Let me come help you look. Just gonna leave our bucket of fish, huh? Rufus! 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 
Rufus! Rufus! Well, this ain't like him, Pa. Can you go search the other side of the track? Rufus, where are you, buddy? Oh, God. Parent Panic Simulator 2021 right here. Jack, you calm down too. Come here. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do, Pa? Well, suck it, Dad. Don't swallow it. Jesus, it's kind of venom. Sucking? Yes, Jack, I am. Get the poison out. You can't quite expect the kid to be calm there. You just can't. Tell him to calm down, whatever. But kids are going to panic. Kids are absolute liabilities in crisis situations. They are not helpful. They are they are dead weight. Jack's going to panic. John just needs to focus on doing what he's got to do. Let Jack panic. You can deal with it later. Right? Like, de-escalate him as best you can. But, you know, you talk about what you're doing. I'm, I'm taking care of it gonna suck the venom out i need you to stay quiet you tell them what to do not instead of what not to do like kids are absolute liabilities in these situations and that's just the reality of it he's gonna die he's gonna die he'll be okay we just gotta get him somewhere warm and calm he's gonna die go get the fishing rods and the fish i'm taking the dog home oh boy abigail can I get a hand? What, what's going on? Dog got bitten by a snake. Let's look after him. And the boy. Grab his rug. Is it gonna be okay? Jack, the dog is gonna be just fine. We never should have gone fishing. Sometimes, sometimes, you just don't know how things are gonna turn out. But, but the dog... The dog's gonna be fine. It's okay, son. Damn. Well, yeah, it's sad. I, Jack's going to process it that way. It makes complete sense. See, he's fine. He's good. Hey, whatever your name was. Rufus. Good boy, you're okay. Rufus, boy. Okay, so as a parent in that situation, one of the things that you have to understand is that Jack is going to use inductive reasoning to make sense of that moment. He is going to himself, and he's going to blame the things that simply logically make sense in terms of like what would facilitate that happening. Jack's saying we should have never gone fishing is like maybe this like, you know, early development way of trying to save face. And then... He probably will blame himself. He'll probably blame himself by saying something like, I wanted Rufus to come with me. I said I was going to go on the trip, whatever it may be. And so John, as the parent in that moment, can intercept that and say, Jack, I know it's really easy to blame yourself for this, and I understand why you would do that. However, there are times when we have unanticipated consequences that don't have anything to do with you. And things sometimes happen in ways we don't expect, and it can be pretty distressing when it happened, and we just got to experience that with Rufus, and it wasn't fun. It was not your fault. It was not any of our fault. It was the fault of the snake that decided to bite Rufus. That's really where the fault is. 
we focused on what we could do, which was to respond to that situation. You make it a teachable moment in that way. Don't just say it wasn't your fault and move on. Explain how it wasn't his fault so that he actually has something to connect it to. And yeah, Zine, I think, you know, it's an interesting question, right? Like if you weren't sure the dog was going to be okay, would you want to avoid direct reassurance that the dog will be fine? Yeah, I would. I think if John needs to say the dog will be fine in order to get Jack to calm down so they can move the dog to a place where they can actually do what they need to do, then yeah, I think you do what you got to do. You can explain it later. But yeah, when you're in a little bit more of a benign situation like this, you could say to Jack, I'm pretty sure he's going to be fine, but I don't know. You do want to create some realistic expectations there. Yeah, because yeah, if, if Jack starts to get a sense that John's just trying to say stuff to placate him and make him feel better, that's not going to go over well. And Jack has shown himself to be pretty intelligent. So you would want to avoid that if you could. For sure. Look at that. He's doing all right. Back to his old sleepy self. You doing okay? Dogs get bit sometimes. I'll get tougher, sir. Life can be real nasty, son. Worst things are gonna happen, you know. Says a lot about what Jack thinks John values. I'll get tougher, sir. This isn't about your toughness, Jack. Not at all. You were tough. And here's how you were tough. You watched it happen. You called me over. You stayed as calm as you could while we walked to the house. This ain't about toughness. Not at all. This is about recognizing that bad things can happen sometimes, for sure. But you get to react to it. One of the things that's helpful is to stay as calm as we can in those moments. And I know it's hard to do sometimes because you care about the dog. And really, you know, not so great things happen sometimes. And that was really scary. John makes the mistake of trying to make this this big lesson that bad shit's going to happen to you in life. And so this is really nothing in comparison to it. That's not a good idea. For Jack, this is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to his dog. To him, even potentially. You don't want to minimize it by trying to make some big giant lesson out of it. Focus on that specific moment. Ask Jack how he felt. Ask him how he feels now. Talk to him about why he thinks he might want to be tougher there. Get a feel for his experience. Don't make it a whole abstract thing that Jack has no way of understanding or connecting to because all you're really going to do is freak him out. You don't need to use this as an opportunity to say how crappy life's going to be, John. Use this as an opportunity to check in with your kid. Because it ain't going to land with him the way you think it is. Good. Well, you take care now. Okay, sir. Howdy, Abigail. So you happy? I think so. <laughs> and I did good? You did good. So... <laughs> am I forgiven? <laughs> Never. <sighs> <laughs> you are a hard woman. <laughs> Ma! Pa! Come out here! Sadie! <laughs> You're alive! John, it's... Sadie Adler. <laughs> well, how'd you know she was... We... I... saw her. I you thought I... You well. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, boy. Come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. John's gonna panic. John is going to panic, man, as soon as Sadie starts talking about doing bounties. Oh, 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 man. John never thought Sadie was going to show up, and now here she is. And he's got to be freaked out, because if she's here, she's here for a reason, and that reason is probably connected to the bounty hunting that they've been doing. And that is the absolute worst-case scenario for him and Abigail, is Abigail is going to freak. She's going to think he's back to his old ways. Happy to see Sadie now until she hears what she has to say. This is why John and Abigail need to leverage these moments where they're with each other 
really talk about expectations to communicate honestly to talk about how we got here to talk about what we need to do going forward because otherwise they are screwed in these situations because it's all going to be reactionary instead of looking at it and going like okay this was probably going to happen now i have an understanding of the context around all of this i know what john and i are trying to build together etc cetera, etc cetera. oh this is a nightmare scenario for john absolute nightmare scenario <laughs> Tell me about you, darling. No, armed to the teeth like that. I'm a working woman, Abigail. I'm a bounty hunter, bodyguard. I protect the gold prospectors up in the hills. I'm thinking of starting my own transportation business. I was thinking maybe if John wanted to earn some money. My husband, he ain't looking for that kind of work. I took on a lot of debt when we bought this place. And you're working for her to pay it off? Yes. Sometimes I was. But I thought we said no more. <laughs> you said that. <laughs> I'm a goddamn man. <laughs> Gail. And I never got killed. It's hunting down fools for the government. Easy. Even Jack could do it. <laughs> Don't you put those stupid ideas in the boy's head. He's going to do something better than this. Like what? Writing silly stories? <laughs> I'm sorry, Abigail. John! Oh, God, I can't. Ah! <laughs> Oh, John. Focus on your new identity. Focus on what you're trying to build. You want to have a life where Jack can write stories and make a living doing that. This is not inevitable. Oh, God. John. Really, I am. I just thought if you wanted to earn some money how many times do i gotta bury you john marston never you ain't never burying me it's legal work that i can handle there's a there's something else micah bounty hunting is one thing but goddamn micah i heard he was up country or some fellow who sounded just like him. Killed a family. Bar a little girl who escaped. Leave Micah oh. alone. Listen, I'm sorry, Abigail. I came by because I was riding by chasing a fella, and I thought John wanted to earn some extra money. What is it? Abigail, we need the money. Some fella robbed his business. You know, an accountant or something. Came down from Rhodes, I believe. How much does it pay? It pays good. Well, the soft ones usually do. Okay, then. I guess. But Micah? No. All right. John Marston, let's go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. This is it. This is the crucible for John. This is the moment that John has to decide. Has to decide. I put my energy into what I'm trying to be. Or do I focus on that leftover loyalty from a life that I once had and I'm still very used to. This is gut check time. If John goes after Micah, I give Abigail full, unabashed support to bail. I get it. You have to, you have to, you have to do this, John. You have to decide when you're going to do something different, man. Oh, man, don't go after Micah and don't let Sadie talk you into it. Exercise boundaries with her in the same way she has with you, buddy. <clears throat> you bring him back to me. You hear? Of course. Because I think that Abigail understands and I think she likes Sadie enough and trusts Sadie enough that this is okay. But it is right for her to set that. Say your goodbyes, John. Is... We're off. It is right for her to set that boundary. Whoa. Oh, my Lord. You want to work? Let's do it. Oh, Lord. Follow me. We're going up into tall trees. Because here's the other thing, right? We're not just John Marston here. We're also paying attention to Sadie. 
Sadie's got unfinished business with Micah too. And Sadie is literally at the same crossroads that we are. Sadie doesn't have to go after Micah. So, so me and Sadie in this moment, John and Sadie can make a pact. We're doing something different. We're not going after Micah. I can't afford it. If you go after Micah, you're doing this by yourself, Sadie. I cannot follow you down there. I got you on every other way possible. I got Abigail's blessing. We are not going after Micah, but Sadie's in the same boat. We have to be real careful not to catalyze each other in the wrong way. We are two snowballs on the top of a hill. And we have a choice of whether we go down one road, go down the other. And once we pick one and go down, it's going to escalate and get bigger. Yes, Gavin, I do. Hey, it's nice of you to stop by and see the place, finally. Abigail's back with the boy. You must be so pleased, John. And the ranch? You were right. It's really something. I think I'm gonna ask her to uh, marry me. I got a ring. It was... It was Arthur's. I found it in a bundle of things that I've kept. You're marrying Abigail. Or it, asking her, at least. Oh, my. I never took you for a romantic. No. Me neither, but <laughs> it's something I've thought about, and I, I think, I know, I want it. Okay. I guess I thought you were married already, long ago. No, not really. Not officially. Well, I'm real happy for you, Joan. Being married, it made me real happy. Kudos to Sadie for being... Kudos to Sadie for making that about John and not about her. Uh, she is something. She could have so easily made that about envy she has for John. We're and about... The main track up here. My man's in you know, post. She could have made that about how her circumstance, her marriage got... I mean, she could have made that about her and she didn't. That's wonderful. I have so much so respect for her. We're coming up on where he's been safe. This moron accountant, Marshall Thurwell, been trying to live like an outdoorsman. Camping out here. He's lucky the Skinner brothers ain't found him. Well, they might have. A pair. Must be it. Get down. Let's take a look around. Something's been here. This... This looks... Looks like a bear or something came through here. Hmm. The fella left in quite a hurry. Here. Oh, he was from the south, whoever he is. Then maybe he's our man. If he ain't become some bear's lunch. Yeah, it looks like they went this way. Him or the bear? <laughs> Both of them. That's that way, I'd say. Great. Can you see which way he might have gone? Okay, I think I got him. Follow me. Yeah, this way. Keeps going through here. There's a cabin up here. It's 
See if it's him. Crap. Ugh, well, I ain't pretty. Oh boy, that our fella? Maybe, but looks more Holy like a local shit. farmer to me. Or what's the lift of one? Is he gone? You, Marshal Thorwell? That I am, ma'am. I'm here to arrest you on behalf of the state of Lemoyne. You're wanted for theft, fraud, and avoiding arrest. Is the monster still out there? No, I think he's gone. Come out. Come on. Two shoes. <laughs> Keep walking. <laughs> Come on. I'm coming. Look out! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sadie! 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 Shoot him! Jesus! I think he's gone. Oh, fucking monster. Thurwell! Get out here! Before I come in there and kill you myself! I I'm coming. Pathetic. Waiting to see if that animal ate us? No, ma'am. That weren't it. Yes, it were. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Thurwell, call yourself a man? Well, it's like Abigail says. That's one word for you. I can't believe we didn't kill that bastard. Gave him something to remember. Why you get that? So anyway, gave him something to remember us by at least. You all right, John? Yeah. Ah. Just we always find a way to almost get killed, don't we? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the problem. Maybe it wasn't right of me to bring you along on those really heavy things. A family man and all. Seeing all this, I don't know if I can do it again. I'm my own man, ain't I? I get to make those calls. I needed the money. You True. are your own man, sure. But I'm my own woman. And I get to say who I ride with. And I don't know if your ranch and your kid and your wife are things I want to be worrying about when I hear a gunshot. That's fair. Yeah, fair enough. Those are fine new clothes. Who's this up here? Is that, are you Sadie Adler, ma'am? The bounty hunter? Get off the road. Look, I got great respect for you professionally. But if that's Marshal Thorwell there, uh, me and my partner would like to split the reward. You're doing what? Get off the road! We was thinking you might need protection. I look like I need protection? Uh, me and my partner, we're dead set on splitting that reward. And if not, well, we said we was going to take all of it. <laughs> you and your partner are just children. Don't get yourselves hurt now, son. I told you she wouldn't listen. Drop him. Damn. No more of that, okay? Them bastards was green. If we didn't get him, someone else would have. I guess. This is a cold business, ain't it? Yep. It does work. I have no food. I'm gonna have to literally drink. I have to drink tonic Why just to survive right now. Level of detachment. You ever think if it's right? No. 
I just see orders on the wall, and I try and fill them. And if there's other bastards after the same orders as I am, I get competitive. It's called industry. And if you ain't noticed, everyone is out there doing it. I guess they are. Yeah. Uh, you said earlier you knew something about Micah. John. You Are you sure you want to hear about John. it? John. All that back at your ranch enough? If I find it, I will handle it. Your bounties or transport work? That's your decision to bring me along or not. But, but Micah? That's something we, well, I, I gotta do. With or without you, Sadie. You know what I mean? Arthur is not around anymore, John. You want to talk known quantities in the most direct way possible? Abigail is here. Jack is here. Arthur is not. You don't have to do this, John. You don't have to do this. You can make a choice. This ain't John being slave to anything, but his own sense that he doesn't have control over what he focuses on. Okay, okay. I know. Well, I'm hearing things. A lot of things. Still, mostly just whispers, but I think you might be pretty close. When you hear something real, you bring it to me. You insane? I wasn't even close to that guy. I'm trying, Sadie. God, if there, revenge is a luxury we can't afford. That should be burned into our minds. Who's this then? What the? You will then. Oh. Here, put him down. Go on, get home to your wife. I'll let you know if I hear anything about Micah. You need a hand taking him in? Him? No, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, I'll send your share to the bank when I get paid. Thank you. Be happy, although we didn't have to go after Micah, so that's okay. <laughs> Obligation, man. Obligation is such a construct, it's not an actual thing, it's something we have created. Something that gets people to do things that are not healthy for them. Here we are, Mr. John Marson, probably about to make the dumbest decision of his whole life. Worked his ass off, done everything he needs to do. He's gonna let a sense of obligation. He's gonna act on that and ruin it all, man. sad. Like, I'm not even mad at him. I'm just saddened that John has not had somebody in his life except for, like, Arthur who's been able to steer him in the right way. And Arthur's not here. Arthur is attached to Micah. That's the worst part about this. Arthur is abstractly attached to Micah here. Going after Micah brings him closer to Arthur. When in reality, the thing that would bring him closest to Arthur and be most realistic would be for him to engage with the idealized, internalized object of Arthur that he has. 
the Arthur that would tell him don't do it. That's going to bring you closer to Arthur here, John. Not going after Micah. Oh. Be quiet. No, you be quiet. So I'm having a moment of repose. Well, you should be working. Oh, I've, I've done my work. Not how I heard it. You should be grateful. I'll be grateful when you get off your behind. Do oh. oh. yourself. Oh. What woman was a damn sight more peaceful round here before you came back? You're just lucky I'm a soft touch. I should sling it out by your ear. Ah, oh, you always was a cold-hearted lizard of a woman. And you always was someone willing to live off the efforts of others. It's walk or work, old man. I got lumbago. Oh, you'll have more than that in a oh, minute. Oh, John, tell her about my health. Do what the lady says. I worked my fingers to the bone building this place, Abigail Roberts. Marston! Abigail Marston, Miss Marston to you. Miss Marston, do you? Why you let him stay? He's actually been pretty useful in a useless sort of way. Who's that? No idea. Friend or foe? We'll soon find out. It's the Gettys boys. Oh, From shit. From Hawthorne Ranch? Yeah. Mr. Milton! Mr. Milton! Duncan! Sir, Ma found some old furniture in the attic. I thought maybe you folks would want it as a housewarming present, you know? Uh, they send their regards. Uh, how kind they are. Tell your mom and Paul we're very touched. Where would you like the furniture? Uh, just over here. <laughs> then we can arrange. This is real kind of y'all. You saved the ranch. Paul said this is the least he could do. Well, that's about everything. <sighs> send your Paul my best regards. Tell him he's got friends for life in me and my family. Bye, sir. Ma'am. I can't believe this. It's so kind. Sure. But there's still some more things that we need to get. How about we take a ride into town? It's been ages since we spent any time together. It has. Let's go get the wagon. <laughs> okay, let's go. I feel like we ain't done nothing together like this since... Since, uh... Since forever? Maybe not forever, but a long time. We ain't had the time, you know? We've both been working hard. And now we got something to show for it. The ranch. This life. This ain't gonna go well. It's so nice, John. I hope it'll only get nicer. We are teed up. There's something bad. Because why would we get a happy ending? May I help you, my lady? <laughs> oh, no, John. <laughs> and now to Blackwater. There were some things we still needed. We can buy them from that catalog. Let's go have some fun. I know your idea of fun, John Marston. Oh. I ain't had it. Morning, day. Mia. Well, I left those things behind me. No, I mean, good, wholesome fun. Like, uh, decent folk have. We decent now? I guess. <laughs> well, decent or not, I still got some errands to run. That's fine. What would you like to do? Maybe get our portrait took for starters. Portrait? There's a fella in town who takes photographs. You want to stare at a portrait of yourself all day long? I hate to break it to you, but you ain't that much to look at. No. I want a picture of us. Me and you. Okay? Okay, then. Sure. Is there anything else you want? I don't know. Let's just... Walk around and see where it takes us. I do have to be back by dinner time. Uncle Jack and Charles will manage fine without you. Hell, 
Looking after themselves may even be good for them. <laughs> They'll starve. And that may be good for them, too. With any luck, Jack and Charles will eat up. <laughs> Don't get my hopes up. <laughs> so maybe you're right. We'll stay. You know I am. Okay, then. Portrait it is. We gonna speed up anytime soon? I'm going, Abigail. I'll just put us here. Right in the middle of the road, huh? Let me help you down. Why are you being so courteous? I don't know. Word to the wise. There are behaviors that a person in your life can do that are meaningful for you. Do not punish them when they do it. Abigail asking John, why are you being so courteous in that kind of way when he's really making an effort is a punishment. It's reminding John of what her general expectation of him is. He has to be defensive about the fact that he's helping her out. Parents do this with teenagers all the time. If you want your kids to hang out around you, make sure you reinforce that. Make sure you reward that. If Abigail wants John to continue to do these things, tell him how meaningful it is. I love when you do this, John. This is wonderful. Thank you for taking such good care of me. That goes way farther than bringing some of that past shit in here and punishing him for making this effort. I know it might seem like a benign exchange, but that kind of thing over time can really start to deter people from doing things because they don't want to hear you keep bringing shit up from the past when every time they try to do something new. Take this in stride, Abigail. There you go. I'm going to head to the Drapers for a minute. Won't take long, but I need to get some materials. You want to come with me or wait here? And after that, we can go get our photo taken? Yeah, after that, we can get our photo taken. Wow. All right. Let's get that picture taken. It means that much to you. It does. Today it does. You're acting kind of funny. I am kind of funny. <laughs> A different kind of funny. He's am nervous, Abigail. You? No. I like this version of you. It just, it just ain't you. Well, maybe I've changed. Oh. <laughs> Language is so important. I like this, but it ain't you is a mixed message. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard this sentiment expressed. It is one of the worst kind of relationship mixed messages you can send. This person who's making an effort isn't you. It's not who I've become accustomed to. Uh, and it's like there's some passive sense that like that's not who I like. This is weird for me. Like it's okay if this is if it's anxiety provoking for her. If it's a little bit weird because she's not used to John doing this. Celebrate it. Distress tolerance, Abigail. Finally. I don't know. She's so cautious right now. Probably not. Come along with you. You gotta decide if you're in, Abigail. Well, hello, madam. Sir. Hello, sir. How can I help you? We're... We'd like to get our photo taken. Oh, photo. Yes, yes, that I can help you with. Yes. So... Uh, what do we do? I'm sorry, what did, what did you want? Uh, okay. our portrait taken. Oh, well, we do that. Yes, wonderful. Handsome couple, quite 
something, but you need a background. A background? Yes. We have Niagara Falls. <laughs> Paris by night. <laughs> we have Mount Vesuvius and its ruins. We have the open prairie. T take, a, take a look. Pick one. What do you think? Let's see the others. Just pull the lever there to release the next one. It's a weighted system, you see. Pulleys. How about this one? It's dramatic, ain't it? <laughs> Let's see what else they got. This is pretty. Or spooky, maybe. Let's see everything. That's nice. It's like being back home. Was that all of them? This is, uh, mm, this is a bar. Surely there's a photograph of you in a bar already. Look, this was your idea, John. It's up to you. You've seen all of them. Anything you like? This one. The home we built. Ah, this one. Wonderful. That will be simply perfect. You know, I wish I had the Congo River, but they require grass skirts. I couldn't afford them. It's just so exotic. You stay there. I'll make a pose that you feel comfortable with. Ooh, get on your knee, John. <sighs> Try to enjoy it. I think I'd rather be cleaning the outhouse. Be quiet. I thought you were a cowboy and a poser. Oh my God, Abigail. I'm a poser. I learned from the best. That is true. How's this? Perfect. Her body language. She is so uncomfortable. Now, it would be worthwhile for John to ask I'm her about that. I'm going to develop this for you. Wait here. Take your time. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing at all. Tough guy. Gunslinger. Excuse me? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't say anything. I just posed. Shut up. <laughs> you know, you're not very nice to me. Oh, I'm nicer than you deserve. <laughs> True. <laughs> Here. Came out beautifully. <gasps> Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, look at that face on you. Be quiet. <laughs> what do I owe you? Five dollars. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I'll Five see you dollars. Oh, Gee. yes. He'll probably come in for a pose. He seemed to enjoy himself. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> What shall we do now? There is one thing I hadn't done. I've never been to see one of them moving picture shows. Never? No. Well, come on. Let's go do that. You sure? Of course. It's the marvel of the age. You can go watch a movie. <laughs> okay, good. Well, let's go. See ya. See you later, Abigail. Come in. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, What's playing? Tickets, please. Something called sketching for sweetheart, I think. Oh, hello. Two tickets, please, to see sketching for sweetheart. That'll be 50 cents, please. Okay. What's it about? I have no idea. Thank you again. Come on in. Mystery awaits. Sketching for sweetheart. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? It's like they're really there. <laughs> Once you've seen one of these things that Put your arm around, Abigail. Hell yeah. What are you doing with that arm? I thought you might be cold. John. <laughs> I 
That's women for you. Don't you dare, John Marston. What? I'm watching. Please. Shh. Yeah, shut up, guys. He's... <laughs> Looks so real. It's not. Don't be such a sour puss. Shh. <laughs> Stop it. She's a piece of work. Really? Is it over? I think so. Come on. Be seeing you. All right. <laughs> we better get home. <laughs> oh, we never get out. The farm will be fine. <sighs> the farm. I love hearing that. Let's go down to the lake for a minute. The lake? Sure. <laughs> Why, you finally gonna drown yourself? In a manner of speaking, I guess I am. <laughs> Happily so. You're acting real strange. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on. You're a silly man, John Marston. What, a, what about Jim Milton? Oh, he's even worse. Let me help you in. <laughs> like I said, Mighty strange. I like to row. <laughs> Since when? You can hardly swim. I don't plan on capsizing. I wonder whose boat this is. It don't matter. We'll have it back. I hope they don't think we're... They won't think anything. They'll think we're borrowing. Will they? We don't got leaks or nothing. She's seaworthy, okay? <laughs> Relax. Look around. All I can see is a strange man rowing. I thought he was John Marston, but now I suspect he's been replaced with an imposter. Don't look at me. Look at the sky. The water. Okay. I'm looking. <sighs> Here's good. Ain't it pretty? This is like me the day I proposed to my wife. Here we go, chat. Get your hankies ready. You. Will you marry me? <laughs> Get up. I am married to you. No, I mean proper. In front of God. You serious? got this ring. I've had it for a long time. Take it. You serious? It would make me very happy if you would... We've lived a lot of lives. Let's just live this one from now on. You and me, Jack, a family by law. John, I... I never... I didn't know what mattered to me. It didn't. But now it does. If you think this is dumb, I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> Shut up, you silly man, and kiss me. <laughs> Yay! Minor key.
What a shot. My man. Watch the sun rise on a new way of life. And then turns and has to walk west back to the house. Which is just so beautifully metaphorical for the fact that we have not tied up one loose end. I really just... I'm so nervous, Ran. So nervous. Sir Galsworthy put down his sword and, and took up his plow. He became the greatest apple farmer in the kingdom. Men used to travel all across Europe to eat his remarkable apples. But deep inside, he missed the dragons almost as much as they gave him nightmares. He and Princess Brea raised seven happy children, and none of them ever knew that their father had once been the bravest warrior in the world. The end. Look what we built, man. What a freaking house. I love it. I truly love it. Abigail, dear, what's for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? Away with you, you no-good parasite. You cook. Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> John, come out here. Hey, John. Abigail. Sadie. Charles. I found him. I found Micah. No. I got a lead. One of his boys wanted for murdering a woman. Been seen drinking in strawberry. If we can get to him, he'll lead us to Maka. But I gotta go now. You coming? No, he's not coming. I will. That's your business. His business is here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll ride with you. John! No! <laughs> no! No! John! He didn't even flinch! He didn't even flinch! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! Let Sadie and Charles deal with it, John! Let them do it. Oh, God. No, I'm... <laughs> I'm begging you. No! <laughs> you know what this says? You know what this says? Micah, my past, the Vanderlyn gang is more important than you. The same shit that happened with Arthur and Mary. You know, this is a big dramatic example of this, but you want the everyday example of this? This is people who go to work, overstretch their boundaries, and take overtime, invest themselves in a whole bunch of stuff, and don't pay attention to people that they've decided that they are tethered to. This is John doing something without expressing to Abigail how meaningful it is. She's the, the this isn't a, the problem here is not that our, that John is going after Micah. That's not the problem here. The problem here is that there's no communication between him and Abigail. The second he he proposes to her, chooses to be in a relationship with her, has a child with her, the second he does that, she is involved in the decision-making process at the very least the very least talk about it talk about why it's meaningful talk about why you're investing in it you talk about how it eats you up at night you have abigail an opportunity to be invited in on this 
John unilaterally making that decision right in front of her and then turning her back on her while he walks in and not responding to her while she chases after him is horrific. He might have had a chance to go after Micah and salvage his relationship if he'd have done that, but he didn't do it. And now he just makes this decision and goes off without her. Abigail has every right in the world to be pissed here. This is, this is John choosing the easy path. This is what he's used to. He knows. This is what loyal, this is loyalty. This is what's been instilled by him, into him by the Vanderlyn gang. John's been out of the game long enough at this point. John has forced in new aspects of his identity. He has intentionally done things different, and he has thrown it all away for something really easy here. And it goes to show how much he values Abigail's opinion to not even listen to her here. This is awful behavior. You risk all this? For what? For Micah? All this? All this wouldn't exist if it weren't for Arthur, Sadie, nope. and all the folks nope. who fell? Nope. If I let him go, this place ain't no more real than, than one of Jack's dragons. No. Nope. I'm begging you. And I'm begging you to understand. This is it. This is... Please. All right, Dutch. Please try to. I ain't got no other choice. Yes, you do. Oh my God. Keep an oh eye on the God. place for me. Oh my God. Of course. Please. <laughs> oh my God. Let's go kill this son of a bitch then. Oh my God. Come on. Let's get to Strawberry before he dries out. Which one of Mike's boys is Cleet. Which one was Cleet? The big one or the little one? The one with the rat face. My memory is they both had rat faces. The little bastard with the rat face then. Him? <laughs> yeah, he'll talk. You're damn right he will. We owe this to Arthur. You think Arthur can't no, we don't. Revenge? I'm not so sure. Especially not at the end. Yep. Listen, listen to Charles. No. No, he cared about stopping Dutch. No, God, no. When I'm not killing old friends. Oh. Nowadays, I'm almost always killing old friends, old friends and new. No. Ain't that right, John? Seems that way. You interested in bounty hunting, Charles? My last assistant was put out to pasture. No, that work ain't for me. I uh. I think I might get out of here. Go north. Canada. Find a woman. Start a family. Like I did. Like I did. Well, I'd like to try it. You know the worst part about this. The worst part about this. And, the, you know, I, I, I appreciate Charles and Sadie. They didn't have to come. They did not have to come to John's place. Okay. This is really hard because John agreed to do this, but this is also difficult because Sadie and Charles betrayed who John is trying to be by showing up there. They did not think about John. This says something about what they think about John as much as it does anything else. This is not cool. So what if they come to John's house and say, we killed Micah? Two birds with one stone. Micah's dead. John wasn't part of it. Perfect. They didn't have to come to John's place as much as John didn't have to follow him out. All three are accountable for this right now. Nobody is innocent. Ooh, hey, John. You've given him the family book. I thought we would have inspired him to a life of celibacy and isolation. Hmm. You know, I've been thinking I might get out of here, too. Down South America, maybe? It's wild, but less mean, I guess. I'd run protection for a gold mine, or take up with a handsome revolutionary. I don't know. Whoa. Something. See something else, at least. That all sounds good. Sounds like yeah. what I already did. Fine. But we got some business to take care of first. This is painful. This is so painful. Okay, 
Strawberry, this is it. We leave our horses by the bridge, then we find it. Okay, John, Charles, you take the other side of the river. I'll stay on this one. If we meet in the middle, we would have covered most of the town. If he's here, we'll get him. Okay, let's go. By the way, I know we're up late tonight. You made it this far and you're here with me live. Thank you for being here. If you're watching the VOD. Thanks for sitting tight. Making it all the way. Love you all. This is painful. Hey, hey, Holy shit. Been a while. shit. Get over here, you son of a bitch. He's wanted for murder. Hey, I'll head him off. Hey, stop, stop, stop. Go over here, you son of a bitch. Hey, Nothing good ever happens in Strawberry, huh? Get him, Charles. Why are John? Why did you all of a sudden become slow as shit? There we go. Good job, Sadie. Yeah. Joe, you're gonna take a turn? Hey, hey, hey! We're all buddies, ain't we? Sure, Sadie. With pleasure. Now, where's Micah? Micah. Micah, I ain't seen. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Make him talk, John. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, late. You little... Where is he? Stop, 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 stop. Where's Micah? I don't know. I ain't seen him. We fell out. And you know what? I'm bored of this. Let's hang the bastard. What? Good idea. Oh, wait, hold on. Bring him up to the gallows. I don't know nothing. Move it. John, bring him here. Damn you. Don't dig your heels in. No, no, no. You heard the lady. Get up there. Stop. No, you stay Dude, Keep you should moving. probably talk, brother. Move! No, no, come here, you bastard! Move oh. it! Come on! Move! Here! I want you stood right here! Still! Oh. All right, string the no-good murder bastard up. He's no better than we are. Don't, don't do this. Let's try this again. Uh. Where's Mike? Uh. Where's Mike? I already told you I ain't seen him. You lie. It ain't my fault. He tried to kill me. Where's Micah? God. Talk, Talk. Or I'll pull this lever. Talk. Talk. No, 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 I think he's, he's up in Mount Hagen. He got a whole gang now. Bad man. Doing bad things. I, I tried to stop him from murdering that little girl. We fell out. Honest. Please, I'm... I'm one of the good guys. Yeah. Hang him. No. No. I, I told no. You. No. <sighs> I can't do it, Sadie. No. Not like this. Thank you. Thank you, John. No, 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 no. Come on now. You won't ever see me again. I said hang him. No. <sighs> We're not here for him. Oh, Piece of shit. Well done. Let's move on. Come on. A little rat said Mount Hagen. At any point, John could bail. Once you start down the process of something, friends, it doesn't mean that you have to follow it through. You do not have to see it through to the end. John could bail here. John could look at Sadie and go, dude, this ain't what we're here for. 
We are here to find Micah. The guy gave us the information we needed, and you shot him anyway? Are you fucking kidding me? That's no better than what Micah or Dutch ever did. It's not us growing. I am not in. I'm out. You go find him. I'm going home. You're going to act like this. I'm not with you. John could do that. He could do that right now. But he's not. Because he's as emotional about this as they are, and he's not thinking straight. He's not thinking about boundaries. Maka, we're coming for you. This pass will take us up into the high mountains. Lead the way. There's an old watchtower up there they might be using for a camp. Strongest man alive? Shit. Almost like that guy's not supposed to die yet. Okay. Canteen some jerky. Oh my god. This is the stupidest sequence of events ever. Rockstar, I'll do it your way. Oh, now I can kill him. Okay. <laughs> Stupid game design. Alright. Whatever. I love the touch of John wearing Arthur's hat right now. Hey, you're okay. You're okay. I will be. Go on. Go on now. Move fast. They'll come down that hill and kill us all. Come on, John. I don't want to leave him. Hey, they know we're coming now. I will be fine. I'll follow you up. I just... I just can't move fast. Okay. Come on, John. Shit. I do not have the guns I want. And I need to eat. Go again. Anyone with 
pathetic bastard! Oh my god. Shit! Supplies I can grab. Cause that'd be real keen right now. I need food, Sadie. I need food real bad. We can't get trapped down here. Oh, no way. Look who it is. You all right? Just fine. You don't look too fine. Come on. You're bleeding pretty bad. I thought that was Dutch. Kind of looked like him. Sit down. I'm I don't fine. know why Dutch would be up You're here, dying. though. I'll be fine. Just sit. It's okay. I, I ain't dying. I ain't. I hope not. I ain't dying. Just go get him. I'll be fine. I just need to rest. Uh, okay. Charles, stay with her. Charles, you worry about yourself. I'll be up there in a minute. Ain't you got a habit of just showing up? Well, I got something to take care of, sure. Just you left, is it? Yeah. Just me. I ain't here for you. Just Micah. So get out of my way and make it quick. You ain't got any further than right. Uh, I was kind of hoping you'd say that. That was Joe! We gotta be close! It's John Marston! Should have eaten something before I did this. Look who it is. Ain't you got a habit of just showing up? Well, I got something to take care of, sure. Just you left, is it? Yeah. That was... No! We gotta be close! I'm here to finish!
Hell, these shots should be hitting. Should have cleaned my gun before I did this mission. God! Oh, man. Some of these shots, man. Look who it is. Really? John, get behind the rock. have food on you or something, man. I guarantee it's because this gun's not clean. Guarantee it. Oh, thank God. Piece of shit gun. This is not the one that I would have brought with me.
Really? At this point, we're basically fighting Vanderlins. I would think. Just one can of beans. One can of beans. Anyone. I want a can of beans. I want a can of beans more than I want to kill Micah. That's all I want. Please. be. In a few years. <laughs> How's that, uh, mm, whore of yours? She's good. Didn't reckon I should waste my time killing you. But I felt different. So it seems. Well, maybe after all this is over, I'll go pay her a call. Hmm? And the boy. 
Whatever you say. Jesus, he reloads fast. I'll make you rich. Real rich. Oh. Damn it. It's just here. Come take a <laughs> Get him. Come on now, Micah. At least die like a man. <laughs> Hell fire. It's just like old times. <laughs> Come on. You turn around. And Sadie, stop just shoot walking. him. You got me. Just like old times. Hmm? All manner of folk paying social calls. Hello, son. Mrs. Adler. Nice coat, Dutch. It's been quite a while. Now, John. Now. What were you saying? What are you doing here, Dutch? Same as you, I suppose. Dutch and I are teaming up once more. We got money. We got dreams. <laughs> Join us, John. Join us. Better go. No, I can't do that, John. Dutch. Dutch, come on now. You shot at me, son. You started. You betrayed me. I could say the same as you. I was trying to do my best. You? You just cared for yourself. I think differently. Join us. Join us, John. <laughs> Let her go! She ain't well. I don't want to kill you, John. Arthur saved my life. More than once. Arthur's been dead a long time. This is a new century. Dutch. Dutch. We all did our best for you. Ain't our fault. Things turned out the way they did. Dutch, killing me won't solve nothing. Put down your gun, Marston. Say something, Dutch. Say something. I ain't got too much to say no more. He shot me. Wow. <laughs> you shot me pretty good. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I just say, you better not say nothing after that. He didn't do that for you, John. You okay? Fine. You're crazy. I hope so. Help me up. Uh, Let's go get Charles. There's money. Lots of money. In the cabin. It's black water. I'll go see. Hurry up. I got a wedding I want to go to. Holy 
shit. Abigail. It's all over. <laughs> wow, that surprises me a lot. I'm going to where the sun burns in the heat stays and come and come away by my side right here to where the river turns to dust and god is never rush come away by my side right here red i love you and the world Seem to make sense when Brother Santo said oh, one more run be enough. I'm gonna be enough. Wow. Money for everything, silver toed boots and kerosene. Uh -huh. Come and lay by my side right here. Red, I love you. Oh, the buzzing thick and the choking, I can't stay no more. Come and lay by my side right here. Red, I need you in the world. When I see you behind the glass, I forget that I'm in the cage. They bring me to Sunday Mass, but it never the rage red I love you and the world Seven months gone and seven years to go red I can't stay no more Come and lay by my side Right here Red I love you and the world You'll see that horse just fall in the river? Red I need you world <laughs> jeez wow what a game that was something that was really something. 37 episodes. As far as what Dutch meant by same as you, I suppose. Probably just either doesn't know why he's there or because his past keeps following him around. Can't get rid of his past. My interpretation of that is probably more of the lines of can't get rid of his past, no matter how hard he tried. He could get rid of his past, if he's choosing. But, uh, what a, what a game. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I hope that all of you did. Those of you that have been watching the VODs, thanks for making it all the way to part 37 and all the way through. I hope that this playthrough was meaningful for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe you learned something about it. I hope you enjoyed the game. Maybe you learned a little something about yourself. Um, this was a lot of fun.
Uh, no, Caboozle. Uh, Rockstar, I always like to say this when I finish games. Rockstar, thank you for crafting such an incredible world. This may be one of the most lived-in worlds I've ever played in. What you have created provided a wonderful opportunity for me to teach so many relationship and psychological concepts to folks. Thank you for making your characters so realistic. Their motivations so real. You really, the writing was impeccable. It made it really easy to do what I do. I hope that my playthrough is one that does your game justice. And uh, to the many folks who maybe who learned a little something along the way, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. But big shout out to Rockstar. You really crafted something amazing. And I am grateful for the opportunity to play the game. I, this game deserved. I, I, I'm amazed this game didn't win Game of the Year. So we are going to do a wrap-up stream. We're going to do a wrap-up stream. Uh, I'm thinking we'll probably do that on Saturday where we will talk about the game we'll process it you all can ask me whatever questions you want we can recap certain things we did it for last of us we did it for mass effect so i want to do it for red dead just be kind of a chat for us a, a chance for us to chat about the game and uh it, this is gonna this is gonna generate a shitload of tiktoks so make sure you follow me on tiktok if you want nice recaps of all the different moments we had Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you leave a comment if you enjoyed this. I would love to read it. But this was a long stream, and I'm glad that so many of you stuck with me through it. Big shout out to those of you that are here live. It means a lot that you show so much support. You come out here and stayed up until the wee hours in the morning. And uh, I hope it was worth it. And again, VOD watchers, whether you just watched it after I did this or whether you are five years down the road watching this, thank you for your support. Oh, April, you, the amount of times I made a tag for TikTok, holy hell. Uh, chat, you can answer this question for me. Is there anything at the end of the credits? I guess we're going to watch the credits, so we'll find out. All these people deserve to have their names recognized. It's late. 2.53 a.m. here. Hey, PD, thank you for the membership. Yeehaw, hope the next game on the list is fun for you as it was and as, as it is entertaining for us. I'm sure it will be, PD. Thank you so much for becoming a member. I really appreciate it. I guess for re-upping your membership. music in this game the environment the design i all of it all of it fabulous i have gripes with gameplay design but we can talk about that we can talk about that in the wrap-up show lemonade thank you for the three months i'm glad i didn't have to work in the morning i would have been super bummed if i missed catching the end live well, i'm glad you made it
We had a lot of good moments. We really did. Uh, a lot of moments for analysis. A lot of hilarious gameplay moments. I, I will say this, that I this game was a beautiful mix of silly and serious. I like when I get to screw around and have hilarious moments with all of you in addition to providing the analysis. And this game was a perfect mix. It really was. Yep, we're done, Martius. This is uh this is it. Love this guitar. This is excellent. That's the plan, Celestial. That's the plan. <laughs> I'm going to leave the Red Dead shirt up for a little while. I'm not starting the next game until after I get back from holiday break. So I'm I'm going to leave I'm going to leave the Red Dead shirt up in the merch store until um, until we start the next game. It'll be replaced with the next game's theme shirt. I did, Lehman. 37 episodes. So Mass Effect still holds the record. Mass Effect was... Th the whole trilogy of Mass Effect was 39 episodes. So Red Dead at 37. Be curious to see how many hours total it was. Yep. They did, Jason. They've worked on it quite a bit. Great track this is. Oh yeah, Zach, it absolutely does. If you want to see a full playthrough, check out mine. Pearson, what's up, buddy? Least use of dead eye? Yeah, I don't like using dead eye. I have Lehman. I have been live for what? Uh four and a half hours? That sound right? Five and a half? Five and a half. Five and a half hours. I mean, even the goal of the group was problematic. It's still meaningful for a lot of folks. So it would make sense why he'd have them up. I'm sure he probably misses it to some extent. I think everybody probably misses what the group was when they first joined it. You know? Yo, confused man. What? Thank you so much. I appreciate your support, friend. Thank you for the uh, 169 which converts to something 
in US dollars. Thank you so much for however much that is. I appreciate it. Also, shout out to Rockstar for uh, my only one of my videos has been claimed copyright, which is pretty cool. Uh, the music apparently is safe to have on stream, which is really neat. I did it, Ellie. Oh, thank you for the the 25 spot. Confused? That's very kind of you. Yeah. I'm glad Sadie's just fine now. Thank God. And for those who don't know, Red Dead One takes place right. It takes place after this. This is a prequel. So. Unshaken April. You make the ride after Guarma. Which is fine. It's understandable. Oh, yeah, I, I agree, Celestial. I mean, Rockstar knocked it out of the park with this. I mean, Red Dead 1 is a lot of fun. I really enjoy Red Dead 1. I've, I've played through it one and a half times. I never actually finished it. I, Red Dead Redemption 1 was the second game I ever streamed. It was like the first story game I ever streamed. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Arthur Moore. Oh, shit, is that Mary? You know, I never did find those archaeological digs for that one dinosaur lady. I did, Brian.
Oh, I can only imagine Lemonade. It had to have been a ton of people. I mean, you, you don't create a game like this with a, with a small indie studio. All that money that Grand Theft Auto V makes goes right into this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, th this, this game is an incredible, incredible feat. I mean, it is, it is mind blowing. Also, you yeah, gotta love that Pinkerton's on John's branch there. Gotta love that. But no, I mean, this is this is a mind blowing effort. The amount of detail in this game is honestly second to none. Saint Denis. Have to turn in our OSHA badge. <laughs> Big shout out to the testers. Micah was 100% going to betray Dutch. 100%. That's the thing. John going after Micah there. John going after Micah and Dutch was idiotic. The police were leaving him alone. He was reestablishing his reputation. His hands were getting clean. Terrible decision to go get Micah. For so many reasons. Super Chip. How was Red Dead 2? It was great. It was a great experience, Al Bell. I'm glad we played it. I totally understand why all of you wanted me to play this. Like, I, I it makes sense for where the stream's going. I am. I'm going to be doing a wrap-up stream, so those of you that are interested in just kind of recapping the entire game, hearing my thoughts, etc. We're going to do that on Saturday. Most likely. Who do you like more, Arthur or John? They're both fine. What was your favorite moment in the playthrough? Mm. Honestly, Alligator Jesus, I don't know how you could top that. Oh, what's up, Rain's Fall? My oh, man.
Oh, I like how they have the role in the gang. The young lady thief. Duchess Paramore. A widow. A panderer and degenerate. Wow, that's so cool. A mild mannered gentleman. A crooked rancher's son. A monk. A French painter. A foreman. A Cornwall kerosene and tar. A hosiery tycoon. Oh, that's badass. Hamish Sinclair. Jim Boy Calloway, an aging gunslinger. Oh, we had so many moments in this playthrough. I can't believe it. 37 episodes. We started this at the end of December. I started this. Start this in October, chat. Yeah, cause I it had to have been the end of October. About two months worth of stream. Yes, quiet love. So tomorrow we'll we'll have Friday with the fellas. Saturday we'll do the recap. Sunday and Monday we'll just we'll do something random. Might do another hockey night. Oh, I'm so glad you like it, Albel. I got another album coming out relatively soon. October 16th is the date of your first Red Dead video. And there we go, almost two months exactly. Look at all these people, man. That's what it takes. I like how there's a person named Zeus. That's awesome. Look at all the facial scans. Damn. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm just enjoying just vibing with these credits right now. This is awesome. 
This is how you do credits. I like how they put people alphabetically so you know where you're at in the list. <laughs> There's 7 billion people in the world, and about 1 billion of them worked on Red Dead Redemption 2. Woodrow Wilson Jackson III. What a great name. There's Unshaken. Glad you enjoyed it, Caboozle. Gavin is the true villain of the story. Yeah. yeah, the story of Gavin. Basically like the hangover. It would be funny if they did some kind of DLC. You play as somebody who seems to be completely random at the end of the DLC. You meet up with that guy, with Nigel. And he's like, Gavin! And you'd be like, oh shit, I've been Gavin the whole time. Now I know where he went. Thanks to everyone along the way who helped bring Red Dead Redemption 2 to life. And special thanks to all Rockstar Games employees worldwide for making this and all of our games possible. Yeah, no kidding, Fick. I am Hazel. I'm tired. But we're gonna make it to the end of these credits because they deserve to be shown. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's Liam, that's certainly a good theory about Gavin. I mean, we kind of had to talk about, like, what if Gavin is Nigel or one and the same? He's trying to find himself and he can't quite find him. There's all sorts of, I mean, I, I kind of like that it's open ended. We can interpret it however we wish. Neat. I, I like when there are open ended aspects to stories and games and stuff. I don't, I don't think everything has to be. Jeez, look at all this, man. Holy hell. All right, John Marshall. 
And you bought this millstone around our necks, we'd better try and keep this place going. I paid our debts with that money, I... Uh... I don't want to talk about that money. And no more that... It's over, Abigail. I'm sure. Then get to work on this ranch you own and raising your boy. Yes, ma'am. Are you being sarcastic, John Marston? Me? <laughs> Never. Good. Anyway, I thought you liked this place. No, John, I don't like it. I love it. It's home. Pod watchers, thank you for making it all the way through. Uh, those of you that have watched me live, thank you for watching me live. This was a wonderful playthrough. I enjoyed it immensely, and I am very excited to talk about it in the wrap up and then to start a new game. This was a blast. Uh, this is it. I am not going to go back and do any unfinished side quests. I am not going to go traverse the wo open world. I'm done with Red Dead 2. Uh, and so I pre-apologize to anybody who's been hoping that I would do a certain thing in the game that I have not done. Because, uh, I'm cooked. <laughs> so. Um, it's been wonderful hanging out with you all. Thank you for making the effort. I'm yeehawed out. If you provided any sort of financial support for the stream, thank you for doing that. And please know that your presence means more than anything. Please share the stream with folks if you think they could benefit from watching it or if you think they would enjoy it. Growing this channel has been a lot of fun and I'm glad to see that it continues to grow. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We get one last yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> Friends, as I always say before I leave, and I mean it for each and every one of you, I really hope you say it to yourselves as I say it to you, because I mean it. You matter. Your experiences are valid, and don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are. To the next adventure. <laughs>